Good morning everyone. My name is Lake Yasri. My name my name is Prakanya. Today we are telling about project related to science fair. This project is all about rainwater harvesting. Today so let us start our project. When the rainwater falls into the container, the container releases the water into another container. In the another container, there are four main types of things that purify the water and they are cotton, sand, rocks and coal. Cotton collects the, cotton collects the microorganisms and dust particles. Rock blocks the large amount of a sand. Take a look here. Coal. Coal collects the tiny particles. Sand collects the tiny rocks. So this is how the project works. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Myself Ekan and today I am going to show my sci-fi project, the water purifier. It is you. It is used to purify water. It is made up of a cut plastic bottle and four layers: cotton, sand, charcoal, and stones. When I put in dirty water, the rocks take out the large sediments of the d dirty water. The charcoal stops the contaminants and impurities by absorption. The sand stops fine impurities and the cotton stops the sand from going into the water. At last we have pure water. I do not recommend drinking this water as it could still have bacteria. Thank you. A microscope is a special tool, small and neat, that helps us see tiny things up close and sweet. Today, we grade 5 C students are here to explain about a microscope. My name is Varshini. My name is Vadanshka. My name is Sheshta. It has a base to stand steady and strong, a place where our specimens belong. Clip your slide, do not let it fall. Adjust the focus, big or small. Turn the knob and make things clear. A lens magnifies bringing details in here. The eyepiece is where you peek inside to see cells and creatures too tiny to hide. Bacterial cells and dust particles we explore. A whole tiny world like never before. Remember, handle with care and grace. A microscope releases tiniest places. A science discoveries in each view. Different parts of the microscope. Lens tube and base. Stage and focus knob and arm. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello everyone, I am K. Pranav Yadav from grade 7 a. Today I am here to explain my project which is waste management. In waste management, I choose my topic as CNG and green manure generating plant. First, the waste is collected from many cities and towns and collected into this container. From this container, it moves into this container where the waste is separated into two. The plastic waste moves here and the green waste comes here. The green waste is going to grind into small pieces and sent into this container. In this container, the, there are amount of soil and insects like earthworm and snail. Later, it gets decomposed and works on work on it. Become fertilized or manure soil to f to fertilize the soil, and the plastic and the plastic is going to come compressed and going into the uh, this container. CNG gas and the other gases form the plastic into gas and sent into this container. From that con from this container, the the gas is moving into fuel station. In fuel station, regularly we use the fuel to move our cars or autos, etc. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Today I am going to prove salt water and steel as conductors of electricity. Before we do that, to check the motors working, we hold these two wires and touch them. Now that we are sure it's working, time to prove that steel conducts electricity. Now we hold the wires and keep them on the glass. And steel is a very good conductor of electricity and so are metals such as gold, silver and aluminium. Now to prove salt water is a good conductor of electricity, we hold these wires and keep them inside of the water. And even without touching, it moves because salt water has ions and minerals which help the electricity to flow and make the fan move. Now if anybody ever asks, 
the salt water conduct electricity you can assure them that it does fun fact oceans are actually one of the biggest conductor of electricity electricity because of the big amount of salt that they have in their water thank you good afternoon my name is aradhya and my name is ayush we are from grade 5b today we are going to explain about our bell project now i am going to tell the components used in this bell project the components used in this bell project are batteries wires switch soil support motor thread with a metal screw and a metal plate i am going to tell the working of the project when the switch is on the current from the batteries flow through the wires it makes the motor rotate as you can see there's a thread tied to the motor it also starts spinning because of the motor there's a nut bolt attached to the thread when the nut bolt spins and it hits to the metal plate sticked in front of it and causes to make a sound like a bell thank you that's all for today good morning good afternoon everyone my name is didika i'm studying in grade 5c today i am going to talk about my project eco cooler it is made from best out of waste do you know the purpose of eco cooler in india at some places there will be no electricity people will not be able to bear the extreme heat in summer to bear the heat in summer a simple idea of eco cooler is proposed The working principle of eco cooler is suppose when you open your whole mouth and blow air you will feel hot air but when you tighten your mouth and blow air you will feel cool air the same idea is used in eco cooler when hot air passes through the bottle the bottleneck compresses and then expands the hot air to cool it down how to make eco cooler the materials that are required plastic bottles and cardboard step 1 cut holes on the cardboard they should be the size of the rim of the bottle step 2 cut the bottles in half step 3 carefully cut away the top of the bottle caps step 4 mount the cut bottles on the board secure them by screwing the bottle caps on the other side step 5 fix the eco cooler to your window by the bottle next facing in a words so the eco cooler makes people's life more bearable thank you Good morning everyone. I am Pranithi with my companion Shivashini. Today we are going to tell about rotational motion. Rotational motion is important in many areas. It is used to describe the motion by an object such as gears, wires, le- planets and satellites. Rotational motion occurs when an object turns around an axis or a center point. An axis acts as the center of the rotation. Example: spinning top, bicycle wheel, earth rotation, windmill, and carnival ride. This is an automatic swinging ride when that works when we switch on the battery. The Dreamland amusement has a 110 feet tall called the wheel that offers a bird eye view. of the midway and surrounding areas the wheel has 24 gondola cars that each set up up to 6 people we made this project by using dc motor straws cardboard wires battery cotton and glue gun this is our project which we have made to give you an idea how the rotational motion works thank you and have a great day. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Aksha from grade 8. I'm here to t- present about wastewater treatment and depuration. Wastewater treatment also called as sewage treatment is a process of removing impurities from wastewater or sewage before it reaches aquifers or natural bodies like oceans, lakes, rivers and estuaries. On-site sewage treatment plants treat and purify wastewater and uh, send it for a reuse a suitable reuse so the wastewater is treated in this four ways it is sent to uh, big gravels then small gravels and then to the sand and then to the tissue the clean water is stored here as we all know water is useful in many ways water is then sent to irrigation 
Deperigation is a deperigation uh, pipes allow the water to drip slowly to the plant's root zone or onto the uh, plant's soil surface. It uh, sends minerals and nutrients so uh, nutrients to the plant so plant gets what exactly it needs in the right time at the right amounts and this is the real picture of drip irrigation and this is the real photo of wastewater treatment thank you have a great day good afternoon everyone my name is darshik from 4th a i have made the project metal detector i have used these materials to make my metal detector transistor resistor diode detector coil buzzer led capacitor power supply battery 9v the first inventor of the metal detector was alexander graham bell in 1881 the second inventor of the metal detector was garhard fischer he made he developed the portable metal detector in 1925 His model was first marketed commercially in 1931. Now I am going to give a demo. It cannot find a wood, plastic, and a aluminium. It can find these and this because these two are made of metal. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Falgun with my friends Sadhika, Aradhya, and Mokshit Verma. free energy water pump free energy water pump works without electricity and without fuel uh, in upcoming generation in upcoming generations water and electricity is most important We, the water makes the turbine spin and the turbine spinning makes the production of electricity pass common example of water energy is hydroelectricity which derives power from and and flows over the dams water is clean and renewable source of water the free energy water pump works by using natural forces like gravity It works when the inlet is higher than the outlet because amount of gravitational potential is higher than you are using. When we are pouring the water on this, one second. When we are pouring water on this spoons, it will rotate without electricity and without fuel, and it will give electricity. by the wires thank you hello everyone i am athar maulkar from class 4a today i am going to present an activity on soil erosion before i start i would like to tell you what is soil erosion so you know that the soil is the uppermost layer of of land containing nutrition microorganisms and minerals which is there for plants growth so when rain comes the soil gets eroded with the water so this is called soil soil erosion in my project i am going to show how plant to prevent soil erosion for my project i have taken three big bottles in the first bottle there is on the soil In the second bottle, there is some soil, dry leaves, and the stone. In the third bottle, you can see that I have grown some plants. Now I have already poured some water into the bottle. So now let's have a look at the water which came out from the bottles. Firstly, you can see that the water which came out from the first bottle is dirty and contains dust particles of the soil in it. In the second bottle, you can see that. It is cleaner compared to the first bottle. Now let's move to the third container, which contains the cleanest water amongst all. Why is the water from the third container cleanest amongst all? This is because the plant's roots hold the soil tightly and prevent them from eroding. So we must grow more plants and trees and go green. Thank you. 
Good afternoon everyone. My name is Sakina from grade 4A. Today I am going to tell about layers of soil. Soil consists of many things such as water, dead remains of plants and animals, fine sand, air, minerals, bacteria and small pebbles. The topmost layer of the soil is called topsoil. This layer of soil is fertile. The remains of dead plants and animals is called humus. Humus holds the water in the soil and provides nutrients for the plants. It is dark brown or black in color. Sand is the grainy part of the soil. Stone, stone, a smaller rock or a mineral that comes from the ground. Pebbles, pebbles are small and smooth stones. Bed of rock, this layer, these layers contain bigger rock particles. Do you know a fact about soil? If there is no soil, there would be no life. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Pranavi Gosha and I study in grade 4 A. Today my topic is turning milk into plastic. I have used some materials. One cup of milk, four teaspoons of vinegar, one bowl spoon, paper towels, food color, saucepan and stove molds and quick colors. To do this experiment, we have to follow some simple steps. First, I heated one cup of milk in a pan until it was steaming. Then I added 4 teaspoons of vinegar into the milk. Slowly, it turned into white lumps or curd. I stacked 4 layers of paper towels on a hard surface that is safe to get damp. Once the milk and vinegar mixture has cooled a bit, with the help of a spoon, I scooped out the curd and kept on the top of the paper towel stack. I squeezed out the excess liquid from the curd by pressing down the paper towel stack and kneaded well all of the curds together in a ball of dough. This is called calcium plastic. I added food color into those calcium plastic and kneaded well. And with the help of the molds and cookie cutters, I gave some shapes to those calcium plastic. We can use such calcium plastic for manufacturing of buttons, decorative buckles, beads, fountain pens, handheld mirrors, fancy combs, and other jewelries. At last, we can conclude with this experiment is casting formation. After we mix with the acid with the milk, the casting gives milk and plastic like qualities. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Priba. And my name is Krisha. Today, I'm going to talk about causes of water pollution. There are different kinds of water pollution wastewater, radioactive substances, agriculture deforestation, thermal pollution, and oil pollution. Water pollution happens when harmful substances get into rivers, lakes, and oceans. It can happen when people throw trash into the water. Chemicals from the factories can also cause water pollution. Water pollution is when our water becomes dirty and unsafe for people and animals. Industrial waste. Factories often release harmful chemicals into rivers and lakes, making the water polluted. Sewage problems. If sewage system fails or not treated properly, harmful chemicals can enter our water. Thank you. Good morning, dear, dear my friends. friends. I am Joshika and I am Nitesha from grade 4. Today, we like to tell you why do people float on the Dead Sea. Before getting into the presentation, I will tell you where the Dead Sea is located. It is located between Israel and Jordan. Do you know why it is known as the Dead Sea? Because no living organisms can survive in the Dead Sea due to the high salinity. Do you know what salinity is? The amount of salt dissolved in water. Usually when we compare the ocean and the Dead Sea, the ocean only consists 3 to 4 percentage of salt. But the Dead Sea consists of 34 percentage of salt, so no living organisms can survive in the Dead Sea. Application You must try this. You must you must try this see people suffering for back pain, leg pain and other problems. Thank you. Thank you and have a great day. Very good master. Good morning, dear friends. I am Sunny of Great Foray and today I am going to show you about liquid density column. When you place an object in water, it may float or it can sink. Whether an object floats or sinks depends on its density. Density is an important concept because it allows us to determine whether an object floats or sinks when placed in a liquid. Now, I am going to show you all a small experiment related to the density of different types of liquids. Pour one tablespoon of honey in one of the mini cups. Carefully pour two tablespoons of colored water in the same cup. What happens to the water? Do the liquids mix? Carefully pour two tablespoons of oil on top of the water and look at the cup from the side. 
Take the second mini cup and fill it in the reverse order. For first, start with two tablespoons of oil, followed by two tablespoons of colored water and one tablespoon of honey. Place both cups next to each other and observe your results. Carefully turn one of the cups upside down. How do the liquid layers change? The more dense liquid that is honey went to the bottom of the cup, then water and then the least dense product that is oil is floating on the surface of the water. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Sayansh. And my name is Vaishnavi. We are from Greyforth and our project name is Artbot. The Artbot is used for stimulating robotic ideas. Procedure. The Artbot uses a small electric motor to move. In order to power the motor, the robot also needs a battery. When you connect the battery to the motor, you complete the electric circuit. This allows the motor to spin. Now we'll turn it on and show how it works. It works on a DC motor and battery and battery and it has some sketch pens connected to it connected to it huh? and it also draws many patterns such like circles and wavy lines but always remember DC motor works on DC power thank you good, good afternoon friends my name is Miha my name is Nolan from, from grade 4a Today we are representing drip irrigation system for saving water and a better plant growth. Materials used, water resource like borewell, swell, second pumping system, third distributing system, fourth drip tube, fifth distributing system. How to use it? We can take any water resource like borewell, wells, ponds and rivers. I am going to show you how a water motor works. Oh. As the water goes in a tank, the tank distributes water all among these pipes and these pipes have small holes which drops the water drop by drop down. Conclusion: There is enough of water for every plant and no water to run up or evaporate by the sun. Over to you Nolan. A simple drip irrigation system is a way to water plants slowly and directly at their roots. It's like giving the plant a gentle drink of water through small tubes that lead just to where the plant needs it most. So next time when you are in the garden or planting new flowers, remember the simple drip irrigation system and how it helps our plants grow beautifully. Thank you and have a nice day. Good afternoon everyone. I Laina and I Devna from grade 4A presenting on the topic based on Why do we yawn and why is yawning contagious? Have you ever wondered why do we yawn and why is yawning contagious? Let us find out the reason behind this. Common but mischievous action. What is yawning? Yawning is an involuntary Yawning involves the movement of many various muscles in our body such as our mouth, throat, chest and diaphragm. It also accompanies the movement of various body parts in our body. Over to you Devna. Thank you Laina. The scientific name of yawn is oscitation. It is very common but it is very contagious. It is usually caused due to tiredness, stress, sleepiness and boredom. It is so contagious that even seeing, hearing or even thinking about yawn can trigger a yawn. According to Gable K, a yawn is a silent shout. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am David Ansel with my fellow mates Hrithik and Shreyas. Today for the topic of Saifari, we are here to present Hydraulic Bridge. The hydraulic bridge, we chose this project because it is very crucial at times to manage the river traffic and the road traffic efficiently. One of its major advantages is that it is very cost efficient. It is very cost efficient as comparatively to the other bridges such as in London, Rameshwaram and in Kolkata, the lifting bridges, uh, they use electricity to lift. But in our project, we explained and had the aim to make this bridge uh, to be said very cost efficient. This bridge works in a way such that both the traffics are controlled on both road and water. 
when the boat is supposed to part, pass, the road transport is stopped and they are given a signal that the, bro that the bridge is about to lift. As the ship passes, a signal is given for the water transport that the boat is moving. After the boat moves on, a signal is given for the person managing this bridge. And then the road transport is free, free to move on. In this bridge, there are several ad ad advantages. Some of them are that uh, while making this project, we understood the mechanism of simple uh, engineering and science. And also, as my fellow mate told, the, it can manage both human traffic and also river traffic. It maintains both uh, calmness and also decomposition. Thank you, sir. Good morning, respected teachers, parents, and fellow mates. We are the students of grade 10 have designed a project we, and we named it as Environmental Floor Cleaning Robot. Myself, Sri Ram Chandra. Myself, Charan Varma. Myself, Aditya Revant Varma. Myself, Vishwak. The materials used in our project are cardboard, CPU fan, two DT motors, four 3000 mAh batteries, a servo, a sensor, a Arduino, a motor driver, and etc. So we, the students of Delhi World Public School Machel Highway, have successfully completed this project. Thank you for your attention. So good morning everyone, I am Saket from grade 8A with my companion Mohit. So today's topic is crop protection. Crop protection is nothing but a general method to protect the crop through weeds, herbs and through animals. Weeds are the unwanted plants which, which take out and absorb the immune water and food from the plant. There is a solution of it which are called weedicides. Weedicides are the chemicals which take out the weeds. And the example for weedicides is 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. It is an acid which takes the weeds out from the main crop. There is a uh, NPK which is a mixture of three atoms which are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium which help the crop to grow. And this project works like a protection to the crop through animals and objects. When an uh, object such as the uh, wire, the buzzer makes a sound. So that the, uh, the farmer gets an alertness, alertness uh, to the farm that they, it's having an attack. I think uh, it is useful for many crops, for many farmers, but it is much expensive. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Om Singhal from grade 18. Our topic for today is microbes rule. Now before we begin, let us know what are microbes. Microbes are minute unicellular organisms that are not visible to our naked eyes. Those microbes are found almost everywhere, even inside our body and even outside our body, in places such as air, water, soil, plant, and even in the body of a human and animals. The major groups of microbes are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. Let's know about the characteristics of bacteria. It has been considered as the first living organism on the earth. It helps in digestion and it has a unique shape. Circus in bacteria are known as bacilli. Phyloshe bacteria are known as spirilla and commercial bacteria are known as vibrio. Next we have next we have fungi. Fungi is the largest organism by area and it also helps in the production of antibiotics. Next we have protozoa. Protozoa are found in aquatic and have and vary from each other in great sizes. Next we have viruses. Virus is an infectious agent that can only replicate through the host organisms. Now coming to the main topic that is microbes rule. Microbes rule. So we are all consume these products daily. For example, cheese, curd and etc. Right? She's clear, etc. But for example, well, no one knows about the uh, bacteria about it. It's propionic bacterium, aspergillus, lactobacillus, streptococcus, saccharomyces, clotrodium, ascheria, acetobacteria, and many other things are used to make few farming rich products like Swiss cheese, cheddar cheese, soya sauce, and etc. Now let's know about curling of milk. So, what do 
you know about curling of milk? Take some milk and add a very little amount of curd to it. I stir it for some time. But, but do you even notice about the micros involved behind their making? Generally, people don't notice it. So let me just explain you. This milk contains lactobacillus, which contains lactose, which get converted into lactic acid. Which get converted into lactic acid. This also increases acidity, and the milk has in turn into solid masses. And after seven to eight hours, our curd is prepared. Our curd is prepared. Over here, I have taken a demo to show it to you. You can see the solid masses over here, right? The so solid masses you can see over here. Next, now let me just brief you about the discovery of discovery of microbes. Was the scientist named Alexander Fleming went on trip, and when he came back, he noticed his bread getting fungus on it. Then he researched on it, and later on he discovered about microbes. Now I like to conclude by saying development in microbial technology is a futuristic notion. For example, microbial food, despite being such an amazing option, it is hard to introduce it into the market because it's quite expensive and difficult for a consumer to accept it. And it is also it is also very easy to transport and highly nutritious as a normal food and can be a great success in remote areas, in remote areas such as desert and etc. As of today, we lack the technology in making microbial food, but in future it can be a great success. Thank you so much. Hello everyone and welcome to our exhibit on microbes as biological weapons. I am Nihal and this is my partner Arya. Today we'll be exploring the terrifying world of microorganisms. First, let us know what are microbes. Microbes are the tiny organisms that cause uh, the tiny organisms which cannot be seen through naked eyes. You need a very powerful microscope to look through these. The disease-causing germs are known as pathogens. Now imagine that these pathogens are weaponized to spread disease and terror. That's the whole point behind biological weapons. These bioweapons are particularly scary because they can be difficult to detect and they spread rapidly unpredictable. Now let us know the types of microbes as biological weapons. Some nasty microbes like anthrax which causes respiratory fail and plague which was a deadly disease in the past which causes respiratory fail, lung damage and etc. Virus like smallpox and Ebola virus cause fever, rashes and death in humans, animals and plants. They spread uh, they spread through air, contaminated water and even food. Do you know that the wars which are fought with the biological weapons are called as cold wars? And there is an assumption that COVID-19 is also a biological weapon, but it's just an assumption. Absolutely, Nihal. And these microbes are very scary. So, the international community recognizes the dangers of these bioweapons and it prohibits the development, production and stockpiling. You can look at the project to, uh, to look at the weaponized form of these bioweapons and you can look at even the trifold to look at, to, to, to get uh, better information about the trifold. Now let us dig into our next topic and get to know how dangerous are these bioweapons. So bioweapons are very dangerous, they cause fever, rashes and death in very huge amount. The after effects of the biological weapons can be long lasting, social disrupting and can also cause economical damage. Now let us hope that these microorganisms are put in good side. Thank you, stay safe and stay healthy. I'm Soumya Jindal from Grade 8B. Today I'm here with my project which is about the natural phenomena lightning. So in 1752 there was an American polymath named Benjamin Franklin. He invented lightning in a thunderstorm where he attached a wire to a kite and showed that lightning consists of electricity. Air acts as an insulator between the cloud and the ground. In, uh, and when the opposite charges, the positive and negative charges of the cloud and the ground attract towards each other, the insulating capacity of the air is broken down and we see a rapid discharge of electricity which is now known as lightning. There are three types of lightnings, a negative strike. In the negative strike, we see that the cloud consists of the, the lower portion of the cloud consists of the negative charges and the ground has the positive charges. And this is the positive charge and this is the negative charge. And we see that lightning occurs between them like this. The second type. In the positive strike, we see that the higher portion of the clouds have the uh, positive strike and the ground have the negative charges. When these two attract again, we see that that uh, we see that lightning occurs between them like this. In the third type, cloud to cloud, it does not strike on the ground, but it simply vanishes in the air. The cloud, negative cloud finds a positive cloud and it attracts and lightning is occurring. And disadvantages of a lightning is that 
it might kill a person immediately and the positive is that uh, advantage is that it forms the ozone layer of the atmosphere thank you Abhilash. Good morning everyone, I am Abhilash and this is my friend Joshua Joel. Today what we are doing is when you are still outside, you might have seen a lot of places they talk about smoking, alcohol, cigarettes, the problems caused by this. But no one really tells you why this problem occurs. And that is the main reason why these problems are still prevalent in the Indian society. Now what we are trying to do here is we are telling them why this problem is occurring. What happens when you take these kind of things in your body? Yeah. I, for example, now Joel will start with the biological aspects of this problem. Well, the biological aspects, every drug has its different effect on the human body. Well, if I have to start off with, I will start off with smoking. Well, in the cigarette or the cigar that they smoke, people, they, in, inside the cigarette we have nicotine, which is a chemical compound, which will trigger the dopamine release in the human body. So what happens is when a person, when they suck the cigarette, what happens is they, uh, the nicotine, which is there inside, it will travel through the salivary duct or through the lungs and it will enter the bloodstream. Once it enters the bloodstream, this blood is carried to the brain by an artery and when this blood is received to the uh, the, the receiving gland which is the midbrain then what happens is the blood which is there it will take in that nicotine and then it will release the dopamine through the the midbrain and to all the parts of the body that's when you know when you eat your favorite food or when you listen to your favorite music then what happens is you feel that happy feeling and you feel that uh, release of dopamine in your body that is nothing but the release of dopamine and uh, talking about cocaine and uh, the one more thing important here is that all of these drugs are very harmful to the human body and talking about cocaine cocaine is another drug which is very dangerous to the human body in cocaine what happens is we cannot take it directly to the digestive system because our stomach contains HCL which is an acid and, and what happens is cocaine is basic it has an AOK value of 8.6 so when a base and an acid combine what happens is it forms a neutralization reaction and which the person does not feel that hype and the exact feeling so what happens is the cocaine they will put it on the gums or they will put it they will take it in a vaporized form which is called as cocaine crack all are very dangerous for health and they're bad like if you can see four point uh, every 4.5 seconds one person dies due to cocaine tobacco diseases and abhilash you will talk about the rest when we talk when we talk about what is the good use of this cocaine there's actually one good use of cocaine if we, when you talk about in surgeries of the uh, sensitive parts like the eye the nose the ear and the throat the blood vessels there are actually the operating area itself is very small and the blood vessels they can hinder the surgical problem so what these surgeons do is they give the body certain amounts of cocaine with the anesthesia so the blood vessels they shrink when the blood vessels shrink the surgeon has more space to operate they are able to see clearly and there is less chance of error. This is one good use, but when you look at in sports, uh, for example in the uh, Olympics, people are found to be using these kind of drugs. Why they use these drugs? This is because there's a huge crowd, there's a lot of distractions, they want to concentrate and play their game better. So they use these kind of drugs, which uh, gives them better concentration, but it's actually illegal and many players, they get disqualified because of this problem. Uh, Joel will explain to you about the various legal consequences of this problem. Well, uh, see, when, when a person undergoes drugs, what happens is he, he feels uh, there is a substance abuse, substance abuse. What happens is when this person keeps taking it, the, the receiving pathway of the brain or the brain midstem, what happens is the person feels like doing it again and again. And that's why they cannot stop it. It's a natural process. They feel like doing it again. So what happens is the legally there are huge consequences for this. But people will be sent to rehabilitation centers and uh, for juniors, like adolescents who do this, due to peer pressure they have about one year of jail time uh, and this is these are few of the legal consequences of taking drugs well we did this uh, for our science fair because we want to spread the awareness of the drugs which are spreading because in many places in India especially because in Olympics if we see which happened yesterday the grand inauguration like most of the rates for dope, do, dope positive has come from India so we need to make our people our, our friends and our dip sites more aware about what's happening and what are the uh, evils the social evils so thank you good morning everyone my name is Karthik this is Aditya and this is Rayon today we're going to be talking about blood vessels we have made a project on arteries veins and capillaries I'll tell you a fun fact about blood vessels they can be about 60,000 to 90,000 miles long in distance outside the human body blood vessels are of three types arteries veins and capillaries 
Arteries take blood away from the heart, veins take blood back towards the heart and capillaries are the connection points of arteries and veins. Next, Aditya will be telling you about the functions of blood vessels. Uh, let us know how the let let us know how the blood flow through our body. Here how the blood flow through our body. Veins carry the blood to the right side of our heart and the, and pulmonary arteries carries the blood to the lungs and, and receives a and receives a oxygenated blood, the iota. The iota is the main artery in our body. Capillaries. Capillaries have valves which are uh, with which are which are which we have been in the in the model. Uh, sir, can I do it again? Sir. Let us know how the blood flow through our body. Veins carry the blood to the right side of our heart and, and, and pulmonary artery carries the blood to the lungs and receives oxygenated blood. Iota. Iota is the main artery in our body. Capillary, capillaries. Uh, capillaries, have, capillaries have the valves which, uh, which, which receives only the oxygen, nutrients and carbon dioxide in the left side of our body. Uh, and the process begins again and again. Let's move it on to Rayon. So first of all, good morning everyone. My name is Rayon. So we, uh, we're going to talk about how, what are blood vessels are made up of. Blood vessels are made up of into three layers. They are divided into three layers. First one is int intima, second one is media, third one is adventitia. So the first layer is, um, it has a thick cell wall, it, sorry, it has a thick cell. Uh, it is the uh, innermost layer and the, sec and the second layer is uh, media. It is a middlemost layer. It has elastic fibers. Uh, when the bl blood flows from a higher concentration, the elastic fibers expands so that the uh, blood can be easily flown th through that th through that media. So moving on to the last layer, adventitia. This layer, uh, this layer is the outermost layer, and it surrounds the uh, tissue uh, to the vessel and it protects it. Thank you. That? Good afternoon everyone, I am Suva Lakshmi from grade 8B. Today I am going to speak about agriculture to create a sustainable eco ecosystem. So every farmer has problems on uh, farming. They require water, electricity and required materials for farming. So for this I have taken this project. The first level here is integrated farming. The first level I have taken goats, second level poultry, third level ducks. The uh, manner of the goat goes the manner of the goat goes down from the floor and the sweat remains dry every time and it is doesn't like wet flow. And second level I have taken the uh, poultry because it was empty. And third level I have taken ducks because they always prefer to water and when they swim in the water, the oxygen level of the water will be increased and which is good for water and the manner of the ducks is very good for fish for growth and next is aquaponic farming this is a form of agriculture that combines uh, raising fish in tanks with soilless plant culture and third one is perpetual moisture water tank it is a without electricity this is a without electricity and you can it can be create a mechanical energy creates a difference through which water can lift up from pond to tank and next is turbine turbine is a machine that convert, converts layers of energy into a mechanical energy and next is hydroponic system hydroponic is a system that when the water is in rest when the water is in rest we can do plant we can plant trees without use of soil thank you Good morning everyone. My name is Saura Dakshit. Today I am going to explain about earthquake alarm. The things we used to make earthquake alarm are manual battery, battery connector, buzzer, buzzer, nut bolt and cut bolt. So how does it work? Earthquake alarms work by utilizing a network of sensors that monitors the ground movement and send data to processing sensors that quickly determine the potential impact area and send additional warnings through various channels including mobile phones and public address systems. Regions like Japan and California have successfully implemented these systems, demonstrating their effectiveness in reducing the earthquakes. But who invented this great project? Earthquake alarms were developed to collaborate efforts notable by the institutes like Japanese Meteorological Agency and National Institute of Earth Science and uh, disaster resilience in early 2000s. In conclusion, earthquake alarms save lives of people by crucial warnings before severe shaking starts. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
Good morning everyone. I Arpita, Akshaya, Sanjana and Gayatri are here to present a sci-fi project the nuclear power plant. In this project the parts of the nuclear power plant are the boiler, the steam turbine, the electric generator, the containment building, the condenser, the cooler water and these are the cooling towers. Nuclear power plant also called the atomic power station is a thermal power station in which the heat source is a nuclear reactor and the fuel used here is uranium. Uranium is arranged. Nuclear power plant also called the atomic power station is a thermal power station in which the heat source is a nuclear reactor and the fuel used here is uranium. Uranium is arranged in a series and is placed inside the calendar. The calendar is where the actual reaction takes place. It's further placed inside a 5.5 meter thick concrete chamber to avoid mishaps during processes. Heat is generated through a chain reaction process. When the neutron strikes the nucleus of a fuel atom, it causes it to split into two smaller atoms, which is nothing but the uranium getting split into two smaller atoms. This generates a significant amount of energy, additional neutrons and heat is generated. But if this heat generation process continues in the containment building, there will be so much heat generated that it could explode. So, controlling rods, nothing but cadmium rods, are placed to control the reaction by absor absorbing excess neutrons. As the fuel atoms split, a large amount of heat is generated. This heat is used to convert water into steam with the help of the boiler. The steam is then moved forward into a steam turbine with the help of pipes. But when the steam strikes the turbine, the blades are in the steam's energy is completely lost. When the blades move, the electric generator turns on because the steam turbine is also connected to the generator. This generator produces electricity. The low pressure steam is brought to the condenser. With the help of a pipes, the cooler water is sent in the condenser. The, the cooler water then takes the heat of the steam and cools the steam which leads to the conversion of cooler water, co steam into cooler water. The cooler water then absorbs heat, converts it into hot water. The hot water is then sent into the cooling towers and that escapes into the atmosphere. Just like everything comes with the pros and cons list, even the nuclear power plant has few pros and the cons. It's one of the safest modes to produce electricity and it also protects air quality as it produces more amounts of carbon-free electricity. It is the most reliable source of energy. But the radiation produced by this nuclear power plant are extremely harmful to humans. They cause cardiovascular diseases as well as cancer. It also produces a lot of nuclear waste. Uranium, the fuel used here, is a non-renewable resource. It's important to note that strict safety measures are followed to ensure the safe handling of radioactive materials. Thank you, thank you and have a nice day. Hi, my name is Adwai. I'm Diviesh. So th this is an obstacle avoiding and a serving robot. This, is, this robot is used in uh, factories like the, the Tesla factory and some restaurants around the city as you may have heard about it. The project consists of an Arduino Uno motor driver, four TTK motors, and an ultrasonic sensor, and a an servo motor. Basically, when you turn it on, the Arduino Uno is the main processor and is also called a micro servo, micro processor. So basically, when you turn it on, Arduino Uno gets powered on and sends power to the, the motor driver. Motor driver distributes the power to all four motors equally. When an object is detected in front of the ultrasonic sensor, the ultrasonic sensor moves the servo motor. Servo motor finds fault in an alternative direction to go in and if it doesn't find an alternative direction to move in, it's going to stay over there only till a manual person comes and takes its control. Yeah, thank you. Good morning everyone, I'm Sanvirya and Pavnishri from grade 7A. This is our project, Air Pollution Controller. Now we would like to explain about a project, air pollution controller. So when a vehicle passes this machine, the sensors will get activated and starts absorbing the smoke.
and then it filters the smoke and turns it into fresh air and the materials used are switch sensor sensor plates dc motors which are placed inside the cvc pipe batteries etc used in this project so we can place this on highways ors and the ORRs and the flyovers. So the use of this project is to re reduce air pollution in the cities and avoid health issues. And the final motto of this project is to save our environment and give a better future for our next generation. We would like to conclude by saying, air we share, breathe fresh, live fresh. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning sir, I am Pujita from grade 7A. So my project is about pacemaker and stunt which I use for the betterment of heart health. This is a pacemaker. It is a small device used when the heart is beating slowly. It plays an important role during heart failures as it instantly gets activated when it senses a change in heart rate. A small surgery is performed on a person with irregular heart rate where this device is placed near the heart through thin wires near the collarbone under the skin. Pacemakers are used to correct chronic heartbeat where heart beats slowly. Now there are two parts in a pacemaker, a pulse generator and lids. New pacemakers doesn't have lids. It consists of metal pulse parts, batteries and other flexible wires. Now coming to the procedure of this surgery, it, uh, this process takes few hours where the doctor inserts the pacemaker after giving a sedative called Anastasia. Then the, then the, uh, then the doctor observes the x-ray and places the pacemaker near the collarbone under the skin. A pacemaker lasts up to 15 years. Now coming to the stunt, this is a stunt, it is a tiny metal mesh called catheter. It is inserted in the artery when our arteries are blocked with fats and cholesterol. In a condition called atherosclerosis, fats and cholesterol gets accumulated in the walls of arteries and stop the flow of blood. It increases the chances of heart attacks. In this condition, angioplasty is used. Angioplasty is the process in which the catheter is inserted into the heart through thin wires. It is inserted after giving a sedative called Anastasia. It ensures proper flow of blood. After this process, mild painkillers can be given and rest should be taken for a while. Thank you. I hope it's informative. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Aradhya Reddy from grade 7A and my project is the solar inverter. So first, uh, so first the solar panels absorb the sunlight and convert it into DC voltage which is direct current and then there is a voltage regulator named LM317. It uses the sunlight to charge the battery and the battery then provides the DC power source for the inverter. The transistors generate a stable frequency for the inverter. The MOSFETs convert the DC voltage into AC voltage which means direct current to alternating current and alternating current is used to run various household appliances. Now if I switch on the on and off switch the bulb will glow because it is a household appliance and it is run by the converted AC voltage. In, if in case the solar energy is not accessible to the solar panel we have another option called manual charging. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone, I am Prajur Rana from 7 Dell Delgo Public School Company. Today I am going to tell you about my science project called the Automatic Fire Alarm and Water Sprinkle System. As we all know, fire safety is a critical concern in commercial and residential buildings as fire can cause significant damage and loss of life. This project aims to develop and design an automated fire alarm and water sprinkle system that can save many lives. As you can as you can see the working model, there is a thermal sensor inserted on this L298N chip which is connected to this I mean DC submersible water pump to jumper wires which sends, a, which sends a signal to this pump to activate and shoot the water. The key advantage of this alarm is that it can react much faster than humans can in cases of a fire, cases of a fire emergency allowing people to escape. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. I am Anushri of 9th A. And today let me tell you how we gain energy. So the process by which we gain energy is called cellular respiration. We got three stages here. First glycolysis. Here the glucose splits into two parts and 
forms pyruvic acid and the energy is stored has two ATP. ATP adenosine triphosphate. The second stage is Krebs cycle. Here the pyruvate forms acetyl and then the energy is stored as 2 ATP. Here we even have an aerobic anaerobic respiration also. Here the pyruvate forms and forms lactic acid. There is no gain here. The third stage we have is electron transport chain. Here the electrons are moved from one atom to other atom with the help of coenzymes and cytochromes and then the energy is stored as 34 ATP with the process of oxidative phosphorylation. So this is how we gain energy. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Janvi from grade 9. Today I am going to talk about the third eye for blind person. So imagine a world where visual impairment no longer limits one's ability to move freely and confidently. Today I Janvi present you a remarkable innovation called as the third eye for blind people. This device is this device is in the form of a pair of glasses and uses advanced ultrasonic sensors to detect nearby obstacles. When an obstacle is detected, it alerts through a buzzer in different tones indicating how close the object is. Now let's see how it works. So if a blockage is there in front of it, it works like that. Now this device is not just a technological advance but also a significant tool for visually impaired people. This device not only enhances safety but also empowers visually impaired people with greater mobility and independence. Thank you. Good morning ma'am Sansos. My name is Sian. My name is Shreyan. My name is Ajit. Today we are excited to present our project on the DIY Dancing Robots. Where science meets the creativity. These dancing robots are not just fun to watch. They are a great way to learn about mechanic, programming and even physics. What do you say? These robots are designed to dance when we switch it on. Showing how science can be fun. We build these robots ourselves. Learning about motors, connecting wires, popsicle sticks and rubber bands. It was a fun way to learn about technology and how dancing robots can be fun. Over to you Arjun. Thank you, Shayan. Imagine robots that can move and groove to music just like we do. That's what I aimed to create. I programmed a robot to respond to music and sensors creating a dance routine. I designed and built a robot using motors, connecting wires, popsicle sticks, that is rubber bands and Google eyes. This project taught me about programming, problem solving and creativity. I learned that with God and imagination we can bring ideas to life. I hope you enjoy watching Dancing Robots in action. Thank you. Good afternoon sir, my name is Ayan Farooqar from Grade 3A and today I am going to tell you about Arctic Tundra. Well first we have to know what is Arctic Tundra. The Arctic is known for its cold and other -like conditions. Tundra is the coldest of all biomes. It is a treeless plain. It is known for its shores and extremely low temperatures, little precipitation, poor nutrition and short rain seasons. Plants are short and grouped together to re resist the cold temperatures and they are protected by the snow during the winter. They can carry out photosynthesis in low temperatures and low light intensities. Animals are adapted to handle long cold winters and to breed and raise young quickly in the summer. Many animals have it during the winter because food is not abundant. Animals such as mammals and birds also have additional insulation from fat. Another alternative is to migrate south in the winter like birds do. The plants and amphibians are few or absent because of the extremely cold temperatures. Some humans live in the Arctic tundra, for example the Eskimos. They live in the Canadian Arctic and Greenland Arctic. Thank you. Thursday. Today I am telling about how to make magnetic slime. First wash your hands, take glue with activator gel, mix it till when it is smooth and sticky, leave it for few hours, again take it, add iron powder, your magnetic slime will be ready.
Tell Abhi. Good afternoon, uh, sir. My name is Abhi. I'm from Great BC. Today my topic is magnetical slime. Today I am excited to present my project on magnetical slime, a fascinating example of science in action. It is mag magnetical slime is a is a unique unique material that we have like regular slime but can be controlled with magnet over to product thank you good good no, good morning everyone good afternoon everyone my name is prano i am from thursi today i am telling about how to make magnetical slime first first wash your hands take glue it activate a gel mix it till when it mix it till when it is uh, sticky and soft Leave it for few hours. Again, add iron powder. Your mag, your magnetic slime will be ready. This will attract magnet. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shravika, and my partner name is Mokshit, and my another partner name is Sanvita. Today, we are telling about. drip feeder for plants a simple yet effective solution for watering plants this device ensures a consistent water supply promoting healthy growth while conserving water i built it using basic materials like plastic bottle and tubing by creating some holes i can control the water flow allowing plant to absorb moisture gradually this method reduces evaporation and minimizes water waste This project not only demonstrates basic principles of irrigation but also highlights importance of gardening practices. Everyone, I told you name you just A drip feeder system is a highly efficient method of delivering water. It designed to slowly release a precious size of water to the zoo zones of plant. Get a plastic bottle pour holes in the sides of the bottle. Pour holes in the in the bottom of the bottle dig a hole into the soil next to the plant insert the bottle into the soil fill the bottle with the water thank the feeder is the most efficient water nutrient delivery system for growing crops and plants it delivers water nutrients directly to the plants root zone in the right amount the right time so each plant gets exactly what it needs when it needs it to grow for example a cactus is deep inside the soil in search of water and other reason why cactus grows in the desert thank you good morning everyone my name is azik i'm starting in great pc today i'm going to show you a card that moves you see the balloon Material. You need a card with four water cups, two straws, two with a stick tape, and a balloon. Take a straw and keep the balloon end of the straw secure with tape, so you can use the straw to blow the balloon. Conclusion: Making a balloon powered car is a fun way to learn that how things move. Thank you. Good morning, sirs and ma'ams. My name is Rima. I'm studying in grade three. I'm gonna tell about traveling rainbow. The materials used for this experiment is water, tissue papers, glasses, food color, and water. First, keep the glasses like this and pour water in three glasses and mix the food color and keep the tissue papers. After some time, it will become a traveling rainbow. Over to you, Avyan Krishna. Procedure: Set the jars up in a circle and add a different color of food color to each jar. Wait for a little while. You will see the colors traveling up the paper towel to meet the colors in the jar next to them. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kitanshi from Grade Three A. I am telling about lava lamp. Welcome. I am. Welcome. I am demonstrating a fantastic science behind the lava lamp. Lava lamps are fun way to explore by combining oil, water, and freezing tablet. We create the magnetizing lava lamp effects. Observe how the oil and water separate due to their different rates. Freezing tablet utilizes gas bubbles that carry color water through the oil. It's a great example of how the simple materials can create expensive science. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Vaidavi from Grade 3A. Today I am going to tell about lava lamp experiment. Things needed for lava lamp experiment: water, oil, food color, 
food color, water bottle, fizzing tablet, funnel, funnel. Process. Fill the oil 3 by 4 of the water bottle. Fill one glass of water and wait for a minute for the water to be stable. Water density is higher than oil. Oil. Hence it floats to the Hence the water will be at the bottom of the bottle and the oil will be at the top of the bottle. Now put 5 to 10 drops of food color food color into the bottle. Next put Next, put fizzing tablet into the bottle. When the fizzing tablet dissolves in the water, it will ge generate carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is lighter than oil, water and oil. Hence, it floats to the top by. Hence, it floats to the top by taking some color with it. This process will continue until the fizzing tablet dissolves completely. My name is Pallavi. I am from class 3C. Today I am excited to talk about lava lamp. This fascinating objects not only serve as decorative pieces but also demonstrate interesting scientific principles. It happens because the alka seltzer reacts with water producing gas bubbles that carry color water from upwards. Thank you. Good morning friends and dear teachers. My name is Laukya from grade 3B. Today my experiment is on make your own slime. The, the materials used for this experiment are bowl, wat, spoon, water, food color, face powder, maida flour and oil. Now I am going to start my experiment. Take a bowl, add some water to it. Add color to the water as if now I'm adding my favorite color pink. Add two tablespoons of face powder and mix it well. Add flour and mix it well for some time. Add some add some oil. Once everything is mixed well, add some oil into the bowl and mix it well for some time. Once everything is mixed well, your slime is ready. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Manya. Today I am going to tell about color changing flowers. For this project you need food coloring, white rose, white flowers, water, clear cups or jars and scissors. First, pour some water into cups or jars and add some drops of food coloring. Trim down the stems of white flower and, and place it in the colored water. Make sure the stems are fully submerged. Leave the flowers for some hours or overnight. As they drink the water, they start to change the color of a flower. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon everyone. My name is Naman Karthik. I am studying grade 3B. Today, I am going to speak about life cycle of a butterfly. When the egg hatches, a, a, when the egg hatches, a caterpillar emerges. Caterpillars must grow quickly so they can eat continuously. When the caterpillar when the caterpillar when the caterpillar reaches full size they form into a pupa. Inside they are inside they are undergoing metamorphosis to become an adult butterfly. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Dichita Sri from grade 3rd B. Today I am going to tell about life cycle of a butterfly. After after a bird after about 15 days, a beautiful other butterfly comes out 
come out of the chrysal. When the butterfly comes out, the wings are small and wet. After a few hours, the wings become strong and the butterfly is able to fly. There are four stages. Egg, caterpillar, udder and pupa. The seed of salt chances in the life cycle of a butterfly is called meta process. Thank you. Pull it because you have to give it to them. Just pull it it's here. Okay, start. A color burst is an a color burst is a a color burst is when you splash bright colors on paper to make fun and exciting patterns. It's a great. It's a great. A great way to explore creativity and have fun with colors. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Madhurya. Today we are going to do an experiment called underwater color burst. Materials: oil, water, food color, clear glasses, and any type of mixing tool. When in one glass add water, in another glass add oil. Add two to three drops of food color in both the glasses. After mix it. When you mix it in water, the food color dissolves. But when you when you mix it in oil, the food color will not dissolve because oil is a non-polar liquid and food color is a polar liquid. Thank you. Polar liquid means different electrons. Non-polar liquid means same electrons. If we if we mix the oil in water, it do not mix because water contains polar molecules. Thank you. Around uh, look around the walls, corners, or other obstacles. Separate men have a per periscope so that so that people inside can see. Uh, what's, of, what's on the surface of the water? A periscope is a, an a useful example uh, of the lane of a re refraction at work. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Ayraj from Grade 3C. Today I am telling about periscope. We use periscope at a nuclear reaction and submarines and military and tanks and other armored vehicles. Materials are cardboard sheets, crafts, knife or scissors, pencil, tape, mirror, ruler, craft glue, craft glue or hot glue gun, decorative materials. My name is Tarun from Grade 3B. Today I am going to speak about periscope. A periscope is an instrument used for observation over, around or through an object, obstacle or condition that prevents direct line of sight from observer center position. Types of periscope. Sim Complex periscope, simple periscope. In simple periscope, mirrors are used. In complex periscope, prints are used. The periscope works on the law of reflection. The light fallen on one mirror and it is reflected, placed at 45 degrees. The reflection turns and reflects till it reaches human cell. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Yedam from Grade 3. My topic is solar energy. Solar energy is nothing but the energy we get from the sun. Solar panels absorb the sun's energy and converts into power. That energy we can use in many ways. Like, like house for, for households. And we can use for street lights. And we can charge the battery cars. And we can also use for uh, watering the crops in the fields. 
Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nitika from Great Tracy. My topic is robotic hand. Today we are diving into the world of robotics with our homeware robotics. Imagine having a hand that moves and grabs like a human hand, but built by us. This die product showcases how basic material create advanced robotics. Watch as our robotics fingers flex and grip other objects with the precision. It's fascinating how each of the joint and tendon like shrink work together to make a movement. A die robotic hand applies in a different situations in education, automation and research. Overall, it's a very sadly this product combined in learning with a real world application. Materials used for robotic hand. Cardboard, straw, hot glue or paint threads threads it is useful to useful to people who don't have hand and it it can help us in studying also it is a robotic hand thank you Good morning, good afternoon everyone. My name is Ridhan from grade 3. Today I am going to introduce you about robotic hand. A DIY robotic hand is a project where you build a mechanical hand using simple materials and motors. It mimics human hand movements by using joints and strings, allowing it to grasp and manipulate objects. It's a hands-on way to learn about robotics, engineering and how technology can... can uh, Replicate human capabilities. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Anchika from Grade 3 C. I I have made a model of robotic hand using cardboard, threads, and straws. Building this die robotic hand can inwards creating mimics the movement of a human hand. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ranan. My name is Devanshi. Even a great four teachers and even students. My name is Shreyas. My name is Devanshi. Today we, we are going to, to ask about floating eggs eggs experiment. experiment. I am excited to talk about why some eggs are floating in water. Now let us see the difference between Fresh versus old eggs. Fresh eggs sink while older eggs have air inside making them less so they float. To test this fill a ball with water and gently place the eggs in it. You will notice that fresh eggs are fresh eggs are fresh eggs sink while old eggs float to the surface does this experiment helps us if an egg is still good to eat making it useful in the kitchen thank you hi everyone my name is shaya today i'm excited to show you my project floating eggs which demonstrates the concept of density this experiment helps us to understand why some objects float while others sink by using X in different solutions, different solutions, the, by using X in materials used, I used water, salt, eggs, and a clear container. It's easy to set up with things you can find at home. How it works? When you add salt to water, it makes the water denser. This is why eggs float in salt water but sinks in normal water. In summary, my floating X project teaches us about density in a fun and visual way. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Devanshi. I am studying in grade 3 Today I am going to explain about floating X experiment. Materials required for the experiment are two eggs, two glasses, one water bottle, some salt and one spoon. Now take two glasses filled with water. Take one glass and add two to three tablespoons of salt and stir it until the salt is dissolved in the water. Now 
now place one egg in the salt water and the other egg in the normal water and there we go the egg in the salt water floats and the egg in the normal water six thank you Good afternoon everyone. My name is Manvita. Today I am telling about eating a rainbow for health. Eating a rainbow means incorporating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. The most energy or color fruits and vegetables are the richest in vitamins, minerals, fiber and antioxidants. Red food helps clearing, renewal and prevent cancer. White food activate your natural killer cells. Or orange food. Support eyesight. Yellow, yellow food, royal cholesterol, blue, purple food, powerful antioxidants, green food, healthy bones. Thank you. Shall I start? Shall I start? Okay. G good morning, everybody. My name is Ashi in this side. Today I'm going to speak about nutrition. What is nutrition? The process by which we take the food and it helps us to live a happy life. Why is nutrient nutrition important? There are six types of nutrition. They are they are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, water and minerals, minerals and vitamins. Follow the traffic light rules. Green food, healthy choice. Yellow food, okay choice. And red food, less healthier choice. Red food, make you sick. Yellow, yellow, yellow food, do not overeat. Green food, eat more, be strong. If you follow this all healthy eating habits, now I'm excited to show you my three healthy eating habits. You should do it regularly. Regular exercises, wash your hands before eating and after eating. Play from, when you come from outside, play and do these activities. If you, if you eat and follow this all healthy habits on eating activities you will you will become this but if you do not follow any of the one you will become this and keep on eating this junk food instead of white rice eat full of brown rice instead of white bread eat full of brown bread instead of roasted sandwich eat full of vegetable sandwich in, in, instead of candies and sweets Eat fruits instead of potato chips. Eat, eat seeds and nuts instead of ice creams and cupcakes. Eat yogurt. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am Kartika. I today I am gonna show you Dynamic Balloon Experiment. We need three bottles balloons, vinegar, and baking soda. When we mix vinegar and baking soda they create a gas called carbon dioxide then the balloon will inflate now i'll show you how to do it take a bottle fill pour some vinegar in it take take a balloon put baking soda in it attach the balloon to the bottle with without spilling now you see how it inflate this experiment shows a chemical reaction and fills the balloon with baking soda. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Hasika. Today we are going to show you dye magic balloon experiment. We need three bottles, balloons, vinegar and baking soda. When we mix vinegar and baking soda, they create a gas called carbon dioxide. Then, then the balloon will inflate. Now I'll take a bottle, pour some vinegar into the bottle, take a balloon, put some baking soda into that balloon, attach the balloon to the bottle without spilling. Now you see how it inflates. This experiment shows us a chemical reaction and fills the balloon with baking soda. Now let us see. Thank you. 
Good morning everyone my name is Ayan Chado today i'm saying about afforestation and deforestation afforestation means planting more trees De- deforestation means cutting down trees afforestation afforestation is afforestation where we have oxygen we should plant more trees and where we can be where we can have so much oxygen deforestation deforestation we cut down trees because of homes and factories and apartments thank you what is afforestation afforestation is process of planting trees showing seeds in the land to create a forest planting trees helping the environment by cleaning air providing homes for wildlife trees give us oxygen and cool the air thank you good afternoon everyone my name is charvita i am studying in grade 3b today i am telling about afforestation and deforestation and why they matter firstly let us see what is deforestation deforestation is when people cut down trees in the forest to make space for farms buildings agriculture and other land uses here are some effects are there in deforestation that can harm animals increase pollution and lead to climate change Good afternoon everyone. My name is Srinika. Today I'm going to make a bouncing ball. The materials are borax powder, clear glue, glitter and warm water. Take 1 cup of 1 by 4 warm water. Add half spoon of borax powder and stir it well. Keep aside. Take another bowl of take another cup of Two spoons of clear glue, and add your favorite color glitter, and mix it well. Take the borax mixer to it and stir it well. The bouncing ball will be bouncy, and we can play with it. Thank you. I used borax powder, glitter. Tra- glue warm water and constant thank you hello everyone my name is lakshmoswal and i am in third year today i would like to present my diy elevator police system this system works on the principle this system works on the principles of mechanicals advantage and force distribution for our project we use materials like cardboard pulley rope a small platform etc when i pull on the rope the pulley redistribute the force allowing me to lift the platform easily In the daily life pulley system is used in elevators construction exercise equipments and also used to draw water from the well in the past thank you good morning everyone my name is tejesh i am studying in grade 3a i want to tell about elevator pulley elevator used on apartment department mall shopping mall it it can it can carry people and things the the people the people want to go to elevator because sometimes they wa- they walk and go come to elevator the elevator the elevator help us to move up and down to the up and up and down and take a time for the long time the elevator sometimes the elevator move up and sometimes one elevator move up and two boys are there they are jumping on jumping on elevator elevator move da move down and sitting on elevator move down in the 
spring. We have to call bell button for the save time. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanya from Grade 3A, and I am here to explain about air pressure. As we all know that air and its sorry, do you know that? Who identified the air? It was Joseph Priestley around 2500 years ago. Let me explain about air pressure. As we all know that air and its dust particles are crashing us all the time. Let me explain how I made my project. I have taken one water bottle filled with water and a straw is outlet. I have taken one balloon filled with filled with air and I have taken one glass and once the peg is removed the water comes out of the straw because the air ha the air has pressure in it the air comes the air comes from the balloon and hits the water the water comes out from the straw Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anika from Grade Three C. Today, I am going to tell about a water power car. A water power car is made up of see these red bottle caps, toothpick, glue gun, and glue gun, white bottle caps, ice cream sticks, green straw, trash water bottle. A filled the car is not. A water fills the car is an automobile that is pumped with the color dust is an energy directly from the water. Water from a water fill with the car is an automobile that is pumped with the color dust is an energy directly from the water. These vehicles may be claimed to produce on the board with no other energy or maybe hybrid. Reduce fuel, reduce water, and recycle environment. This is how a water power water power car runs. If we pour here water and this will balance and it will move example <coughs> now example like this it will move example a car has a pollution fuel and sound but this don't have sounds pollution and fuel because it is a water power car that's why it is named as a water power car thank you and have a nice day good morning everyone my name is kishor chinder from 3a today i am going to tell about tell about water power car a water power car would be run on hydrogen fuel made from water offering a clean and eco friendly gasoline however it is widely not used because making storing and distributing hydrogen is a still bigger challenge it increases engine power and improves performance remove carbon and deposits and prevent a prevent future build up You will notice comma quite a smoother engine operation, smoother operation, engine operation, in smoother gear shift. Enjoy a longer life of your engine, especially, especially, especially piston swings and valves. Well. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Krutika. I am Katya from Grade Three A. Katya, do you know what today we are learning? Yeah, Krutika, about windmills. Wow, have you seen windmills? Yes, windmills are the machine that we use wind to do work. When when mills use wind to make electricity, reduce pollution. Kuchka, do you know how? Kuchka, do you know how 
often miss work? Blades spin in the wind, turning a shaft connector to a generator, which makes electricity. Parts of windmill, blade, shaft, generator, tower. Windmills are important because they use less fossil fuel and keep the air clean. Windmills are amazing. Let's make our own and spin in the wind. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Shritik. I am studying in grade 3B. Today I am going to speak about tonoscope. A tonoscope is a device that is used to visualize on the vibration. It typically consists of flat surface such as metal plate. Metal plate is all. It is this coated with a fine layer of particulate substance like sand or salt. When sound waves are directed, the particles move and form pattern or shapes in response to the vibration. Now I'm going to show how it works. When we talk, the Good morning. Today I am excited to talk about the water cycle which is a continuous movement of the water on the earth. First let us see what is a water cycle. A water cycle is a movement that shows water changes form and moves from one place to another. It has four main stages. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation and collection. Now here is my friend who will tell you about evaporation and condensation. Hello everyone. Today, I am going to talk about the water cycle and why is it important. Evaporation. First, water from rivers, lakes and oceans gets heated by the sun and turns into vapor. This is called evaporation. Condensation. Next, the water vapor rises up into the sky and cools down to form clouds. This is condensation. When the clouds get heavy, they release water as rain, snow or hail. This process is called precipitation. Next comes collection. When the rain water collects in the rivers, oceans and ponds, the cycle starts again. Now here is my friend who will conclude the importance of water cycle. Importance. The water cycle is important because it moves water around the planet which all living things need to survive. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay, good morning to one and all present here. I am Kirti. She is Tarani from grade 10. Today we are going to explain the respiratory system. Well, the main parts of respiratory system are tra the nostril, trachea, rings of cartilage, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli. Well, when we breathe, the air passes to the trachea, then through the rings of cartilage. These rings of cartilage helps the air not to collapse. The air is sectored into two parts called bronchi, which is further expanded into bronchioles. These bronchioles have pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery. The alveoli are uh, attached to bronchioles. So, alveoli is very rich in oxygen and blood capillaries is rich in carbon dioxide. The oxygen present in the alveoli will diffuse into blood capillaries and the uh, carbon dioxide present in the blood capillaries will diffuse into alveoli. This process happens to the help of diffusion. You can see the expansion and contraction right in the lungs. This is due to the alveoli. The alveoli expand when uh, it is filled with oxygen and it contracts when the carbon dioxide goes out of the nose. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Shrishta with my companion Srinidhi. Today we are here with our project called Sources of Water. Water is a very important part of our life. There is no life without water. Water covers 70% of the earth's surface. We get water from many sources like lakes, river, pond, etc. We use water for drinking, cooking, food cleaning and many other purposes. Water is for agricultural life. A lake. A lake is a water body. It is surrounded by land on all sides. Lakes can be found in various shapes and sizes. They provide essential water resources for drinking irrigation. And other uses of lakes present in India include ruler lakes. River. A river is a naturally flowing water body that contains fresh water. Rivers generally flow 
towards the big water bodies such as an ocean or sea. Rivers generally flow on mountains, hills, etc. Raindrops from the sky. They fall from the sky due to precipitation. It is an essential part of water cycle. Rain plays an important role in agricultural life. Rain is important for plants to grow. Pond. A pond is an area filled with water. It can be either natural or artificial. Ray pond can be pond can be pond can be smaller than a lake. A well. A well is a large size hole dug in the ground. It is used to extract groundwater. They are usually called dug and open wells. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Risha Paul from Great Rie. Today I am going to speak about my project, Toy Sailboat. The, pre the toy sailboat floats on the uh, uh, principle of Archimedes' law. Archimedes' law told that if a body is lighter in weight, it will float. But if a if a body is heavier in weight, it will drown. Also, the floating or the drowning will depend on the shape of the body. Example, if I take a sheet of paper and drop it in the water, it will drown. But if I make the same sheet into a cylinder and drop it into the water, then it will float. Now let's come, come up on how I made my project. First I uh, made the thermocol into pieces, then I took aloe vera So, so let, co let's come up on how I made the project. First I took thermocol and made it into pieces, then I took aloe vera pins and put it in the side, then I took a... a then I insert a needle in the in the middle. Then I attach the sail to the boat, and that's it. My boat was ready. Conclusion of the project: lighter bodies can float with more volume and with more hollowness. If a body is heavier in weight, then it will drown. Teacher, still area, kindly note. Good morning, my name is Ritvika. Today I am going to talk about my project on windmills. Windmills are machines that convert energy from the wind into useful works by rotation. This rotation of a windmill often powers a motor or a generator to produce electricity or mechanical work. Windmills are tall structures with rotating blades. The first windmill was developed by Daniel Halade. Netherlands is also known as the land of windmills due to the presence of large number of windmills. The place where we can find windmills are called as wind power plant or wind park. Here how it works. You can see a windmill when wind blows. The blade spins or rotates. This spinning motion is connected to a generator to produce electricity on mechanical works. This electricity through wires is supplied to houses and can be used for street lamps on roads. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Lasya from grade 3A. And my name is Jashtita from grade 3A. We are, we are going to tell, tell about rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting is a process of collecting and storing rainwater rather than allowing it to run off. Rainwater is collected from a roof-like surface and redirected to a storage and use in the future. This also has several applications such as water conservation, irrigation, groundwater recharge, cost saving. Thus, rainwater harvesting is a smart way to collect rainwater for later use. It helps it helps save water, protect the environment and produce backup during dry spells. Now I am also Now I am also going to tell about rainwater harvesting. 
Rainwater harvesting is a process of collecting and storing rainwater that falls on roofs and other surfaces. It involves various techniques to capture rainwater either than it to run off. It has several application like store collection tank, purification tank and storage tanks. Scientists reach a belief that rainwater harvesting is a practice of doing every a practice rainwater harvesting scientific research believes that rainwater harvesting can produce more sustainable sustainable practice to protect the environment thank you good morning everyone today Good morning everyone. Today we will representing this obstacle avoiding bike. As we know a lot of as we know a lot of deaths are caused due to vehicle collisions in India. With this bike we can completely change that the death number to zero or less. Now I would call upon Dheeraj to explain the functions and how it works. Now over here you can see the ultrasonic sensor which is present over here. In this picture you could see that there is a transmitter which sends out a quick quick ultrasonic sound which you cannot hear. And then the ray bounces back and gets received by the receiver. So the time took is used to calculate the distance. So then the distance is sent to the uh, Arduino Nano, which uses the code uploaded to it and helps the motor driver to control the car. So from this you can say that this is uh, the Arduino Nano is the head and this controls the entire car. So now I can let's on take over. as we saw that this car can avoid any obstacle in front of it so how it will help us in life so with this car handicap people can drive properly and with the peace of mind all accidents should be caused way less so that's it for this project and signing off thank you good morning my name is dikshita and my name is lokya and my name is lokya this is a 3d working 3d plus working model of nephron the nephron is a functional unit of a kidney the it filters the blood from all the waste excess products and waste substances from the body and uh, uh, the filtration takes place in the glomerulus the um, ex recreation and uh, reabsorption takes place in the tubules and the excretion takes place in the collecting duct here are some interesting facts about nephron each kidney consists about 1 million nephrons uh, its length if all the nephrons from both the kidneys are laid end to end it covers up to 80 km its filtration rate it filters about 180 liters of blood plasma per day its reabsorption efficiency uh, every day 180 liters of filtrate is produced and 99% of it is reabsorbed which results in 1 to 2 liters of urine excreted every day good morning me arjun with my companion harshwardhan are here to tell you about the fast action plan cpr which is a technique of basic life support to a person who has got heart stroke or heart attack cpr is a process of externally supporting the circulation and respiration of a person who has got heart stroke or heart attack purpose of the cpr is to maintain an open and clean airway to maintain breathing by artificial ventilation to save life of the patient to maintain breathing by uh, cardiac massage and to by to maintain breathing by cardiac massage indications of the cpr cpr are cardiac arrest respiratory arrest drowning Uh, head injury with unconsciousness electrical shocks electrical shocks drug overdose pulmonary edema full time so so we need to assess some situations for 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 performing the cpr first we need to make sure that the patient is on a firm surface and need to ch and we need to check around uh, and we need to check our surroundings that it is safe or not for doing for, for doing cpr after that you should tap or squeeze the person patient shoulder and make sure that they need help we need to ask them loudly 
if you are not able to confirm that the, that the patient is alive or not, you can check their pulse rate or you can check their breathing or not. There are seven steps for the CPR. There are three different procedures for three different ages. For infants, we need to do with two fingers and uh, uh, to a depth uh, push with your uh, half body weight to a depth to a depth around 1.5 inches. For children one to eight, we need to do with one hand and we need to do with one hand and push her and using your half body weight we need to push around to till two inches for adults we for adults we need to do with two two hands but just and keep our hands on the chest just below the nipple line and uh, and by locking the fingers we need to push hard enough till two inches using your full body weight after that we uh, if you get tired you can ask an, another person if 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 he is available after you need to do 100 to 120 compressions per minute per minute we need to give uh, two rescue breeds. You should repeat these steps until an uh, ambulance or AED arrives. Good morning everyone. My name is Araf with my companion Lakshad. So today we are going to say about viruses and its types. So these are the four types of viruses. They are influenza virus, SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 virus, herpes simplex virus and bacteriophage virus. So let's start with influenza virus. Over to Lakshad. Influenza virus belong to the orthomyx of viride family and it is a RNA virus. Transmission. It mainly spreads through respiratory droplets when an infected person cough, sneeze or talk. Some common symptoms include one set of fever, body aches, cough, sneeze, uh, vomiting and diarrhea. Over to Arav. Next comes SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 virus. It is a novel coronavirus belonging to the family of coronavirus and it is an RNA virus. Transmission. It, is tra it spreads through respiratory droplets and aerosols produced when an infected person coughs, sneezes, talks or breathes. Symptoms. Common symptoms include fatigue, loss of smell, loss of taste, shortness of breath, muscle aches. Some individuals may experience gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea. Prevention and treatment. Prevention include we are, uh, vaccination, wearing mask and physical distancing. Treatment varies depending on severity but may include supportive care and antiviral medication in several cases. Next comes herpes simplex virus. HS, HSV belongs to the family of herpes viride right? and it is a double stranded DNA virus transmission. It spreads through respiratory droplets and uh, direct contact with herpes. Sores, blisters on the mouth, muscus membrane of an infected person. Type and symptoms. There are two types of herpes simplex virus. They are HSV1 and HSV2. HSV1 causes oral herpes. HSV2 typically causes uh, genital herpes. Symptoms include sores, blisters, itching and burning sensations in genital area. Treatment. Antiviral medication such as famciclovir can reduce the frequency and severity of outbreaks. Good morning to everyone present here. I am Tejasvi of grade 7A with my fellow mates Kartika and Ritvika. I am here to present you an epic project specially designed for blind people. It is known as smart glasses. After you wear this device, whenever a person or an object appears in front of you, then the ultrasonic sensor makes a siren indicating that there is an obstacle in front of you. Now, I would like my friend Kartika to take over. Now, I am going to brief you about all the materials used for this project. The ultrasonic sensor, the 3.7D battery, the buzzer, the triple phi IC, the resistors, etc. Now I would like my friend Ritvika to take over. Thank you, Kartika. Now I'm gonna brief you about the process taken. When the switch is stored on the triple phi IC, it starts generating a triggering signal. The triggering signal triggers the ultrasonic sensor and emits high frequency wave. The sensor calculates the distance based on the time taken for the ultrasonic wave to return back to the display. If an object is tracked with the prefect range, the equipment of the ultrasonic sensor will send a signal to the buzzer. Then the buzzer starts giving a buzzing sound to alert the blind person about the obstacle. Now I would like Kartika to take over. Now I am going to brief you about the process, how it works. When we switch on this switch, there is no person in front of it. That's why it doesn't make a sound. Until we keep the hand on it, it makes a sound, which indicates that the obstacle in front of it. Thank you. 
Good morning everyone, my name is Ananya and today I am going to tell you about mitosis. Mitosis is a process of cell division by which one cell divides to form two genetically identical daughter cells, with each daughter cell receiving the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Significance of mitosis, it is required for asexual reproduction and vegetative propagation. It is responsible for the development of the zygote and the individual as a whole. It is also responsible for repair and regeneration of cells and growth and repair of tissues. To prepare a cell for mitosis, the cell undergoes a phase called interphase. Interphase has three main stages, G1 phase, S phase and G2 phase. During these three stages, the synthesis of DNA occurs. Following interphase are the four major stages of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Prophase, the first phase of mitosis during which the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane begin to disappear and the centrioles duplicate and locate to opposite poles of the cell. Metaphase, the second phase of mitosis during which the chromosomes settle along the midline of the cell, forming the metaphase plate. Anaphase, the third phase of mitosis during which the chromosomes are duplicated and split apart into two daughter chromosomes. Telophase, the fourth and final phase of mitosis during which the duplicated chromosomes are split apart to form two new cells. This, uh, around these cells, the nuclear membrane is reformed and this results in the separation of the nuclear DNA from the cytoplasm. Following mitosis is a process called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis can be referred to as a process by which the cytoplasm and the other cell organelles divide amongst themselves into two parts to form two new cells. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Bhanu from grade 9. I will be explaining a topic called meiosis which is really essential for creating diversity in life. Let us take an example. Imagine you want to make a new, unique recipe by mixing ingredients from your mom's and dad's favorite dishes. Meiosis does something similar with our genes made up of DNA. It tells our body how to grow, develop and function. It's a special type of cell division in which the reproductive cells are produced in the body, like sperms and eggs. Normally, our cells have two sets of chromosomes, one set from each parent. In meiosis, these sets are shuffled up to create new combinations and then the cell splits in a such a way that each new cell ends up with one set of chromosomes. This means that when a sperm and egg meet, they create a complete new unique genetic mix of chromosomes. There are mainly five phases in meiosis, interphase, prophase, metaphase and anaphase. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Himavashat along with my friends Ashwik and Bavish. We know that you are here to indulge in your mobile just like this boy. So that is the reason we are here to explain about circadian rhythms and how light affects them. First things first, what are circadian rhythms? They are natural internal processes which follow 24 hour cycle. They regulate various bodily functions such as sleep wake cycle, hormone release and also body temperature. The most important external cues that affect our circadian rhythms is light. You may all wonder, how does light actually affect our circadian rhythms? Well, it starts with a key group of cells in our eyes called the retinal ganglion cells. These cells have a photopigment called melanopsin. This is sensitive to blue light. This blue light, this blue light emitted from the sun is transmitted to the brain's primary clock known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus, the SCN. The SCN is the main pacemaker for the circadian rhythm. The SCN controls and alters the production of the melatonin. The higher the light levels of the li higher the light levels, the lower the production of melatonin happens. Due to which we don't sleep during days. Whereas during nights, the lower the light levels, so the production of melatonin happens in a high way. Here are some suggestions by us to avoid blue light that can affect our circadian rhythms. We insist you to cut off your screen time at least one half before you sleep so that you don't affect your circadian rhythms. Thank you. you hope we f you found our uh, presentation enlightening and helpful. Good morning everyone. I, Kimaya from grade 10, uh, here to tell you the consequences about c uh, cigarette and smoking, tobacco. So we all know or I have seen advertisements before cinemas or movies start that tobacco and the cancers caused due to smoking these. Do you know what uh, happens in our body after we smoke uh, smoke cigarettes? Here, uh, here we have a picture where it shows how the smoke which is transported around our body due to inhaling it causes different uh, different diseases to different organs like with uh, these uh, like uh, it can destroy our uh, blood vessels can cause strokes, can cause cancer, lung cancer and chronic pulmonary diseases and etc. We all know this is a type of uh, 
a type of disease which should be avoided which can be avoided there are a few symptoms for withdrawal of uh, smoking which can for withdrawal uh, like um, uh, that's it for that now there is two types of smoking that primary and secondary smoking primary smoking is when you inhale the smoke directly through through uh, smoking cigarettes the second type is secondary through which you smoke the uh, sm uh, cigarette smoke through when uh, a person standing beside you is smoking and inhales the same air which is released by them which can cause harm to their organs thank you good morning my name is ritika today i am here with my companion sanastrita today here we are here to present antibacterial effect in natural substances now you might wonder what is antibacterial effect Bef uh, nowadays we rush to the hospitals be uh, for viruses and diseases before knowing that uh, you need to know w what's there w the antibacterial substances at home antibacterial substance is, is is a substance that kills bacteria or stops them from growing and causing diseases thank you sana now let us see a few natural substances that include antibacterial effect the curcumin in turmeric cinnamon dye in cinnamon alcin in uh, garlic ginger in ginger neem leaves eucalyptus in eucalyptus oil tea tree in tea tree oil honey especially monarch honey aloe vera and so on so on contain antibacterial effect in natural in these substances these natural substances are used in traditional medicine or modern medicine practices Certainly, I know a few more, like chamomile, basil, uh, lemon, ginger, uh, apple cider vinegar, and many more. Thank you. Have a great day. Good morning, everyone. This is me, uh, Muskan, and this is Akanksha. We know that uh, how to prepare our food, but plants that we don't know that plants prepare their food. This is why chloroplast is present in the plant to help the uh, plant uh, make their own food. So today our topic is chloroplast. Basically, there are types of plastids. There are three types of plastids, which are leucoplast, chloroplast, and chromoplast. Chromoplast gives the uh, fruit or flower part of the plant the red, orange, or yellow color. Leucoplast are colorless plastids present in the non-photosynthetic areas where, like the uh, seeds or the roots. Coming to chloroplast, these are unique because they have their own DNA apart from the DNA present in the nucleus of the cell. Uh, coming to the structure of the chloroplast, this area, this fluid filled area is known as the stroma. This is known as thylakoid which is tagged to form grana or granum which is connected through lamellae and the place inside each thylakoid is known as lumen where important functions of photosynthesis take place. In conclusion, chloroplasts are very important for the plants because uh, they exchange sunlight into energy helping the plants to grow. These small parts of the plants contains chlorophyll which gives the plant green color. Knowing about chloroplast is how it helps on the earth and as well as in the plant because they produce oxygen and the food. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Sanjali and with my companion Pavan. Today we are going to talk on our model vacuum. Just like how we have storerooms in our house, in plant cells, we have vacuoles. The plant vacuole was first discovered by Antony van Leeuwenhoek in the year 1676. In plant cells, vacuoles are large in numbers and occupy 50 to 70% of the cell, whereas in animals, they are smaller in size and number. Vacuoles are membrane-bound organelles present within the cytoplasm of the cell. They contain a s the cell sap, which comprises various organic and inorganic compounds. Vacuoles have many functions. Firstly, they act as storage compartments holding nutrients, ions, waste products, and many more. Secondly, they maintain tergal pressure, providing structural support to the cell. They maintain the pH level of the cell's internal environment. They contain enzymes that participate in digestion process, breaking molecules, disposal, or recycling. In some cases, they contain pigments that give color to different parts of a plant. They isolate harmful substances, preventing cell damage. They also help in cell expansion by storing water in it. So basically, vacuoles act as a barrier to keep the cell safe. 
Lastly, they contribute growth and development to the cell. From storage to digestion to defense and growth, these vacuoles play a very important role in maintaining cellular health and its functions. So in conclusion, vacuoles are essential organelles for the plant cell. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I am Veda from grade 9. Today I am going to present my project on electromagnetic induction, a fundamental topic in physics which revolutionized the way we generate, transmit and uh, and utilize energy. This was discovered by Faraday Marathon in 1931, which dis uh, which uh, which and uh, converter helped in conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy and vice versa. So, uh, electromagnetic energy is the backbone of uh, modern technologies, including inductors, transformers, generators, and motors. This has helped us in converting mechanical energy into electronic energy and powering many homes, industries and infrastructures. So today we will learn the numerous applications the, about electromagnetic energy. So here we have a coil. So here we have a coil which is the primary coil where I give energy with a battery source and this is the secondary coil. When I bring this secondary coil near the primary coil I can light it up without any contact you can see so this is one of this is one function uh, where we can light up the coil without any contact so this is used in many ways and electromagnetic energy has a profound impact on our day-to-day -day life powering many homes infrastructures and there here are some daily life examples so we can generate and utilize energy which helped us powering many homes and trans infrastructures then we have motors we can use motors for light of fans where fans hair dryers and air conditioners fridges then we use in transformers step up and step down transformers are used so we can uh, pass an electricity through over, uh, over long distances and it is used in circuits and it is used in circuits thank you good morning my name is umesh along with my friend lakshay today we are gonna conduct a bicolor hidden message Hey, do you want to test your luck? Come and choose any paper from this five rows. There is nothing on the paper, but when we spray this liquid on the paper, the message will be revealed. As you can see, there is a smiley on the paper. It happened because when we write a, sol a message with cornstarch solution and spray it with iodine solution, it changes its color. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Raj Bharatwaj and I am here to discuss three topics which are homemade fresh food versus processed food, homemade versus store bought and role of emulsifiers in the storage of food. If we consider fresh versus processed food, fresh food have more nutrients and vibrant flavors which the, which allow them to have a more wholesome experience while eating and they do not have any additives or preservatives which they, makes them very healthy. If we take processed food, they undergo various methods which are drying, freezing, canning and preservation which have a lot of sugars, salts and additives in them which are not good for us. If we take homemade and store-bought food, Homemade food encourage the use of fresh food which is way healthier for us and you can customize it to our personal tastes. And store-bought food, they do not use any fresh food because they make in a large scale, it's, imp it's not possible to use fresh food. So they use processed food which is not healthy for us. Role of emulsifiers. Emulsifiers are the substances which allow water and oil to be together and not be separated. Which allows them, to, uh, which gives them the smooth texture and the flavor. So these are some of the ex uh, these are some of the examples, like white egg and brown egg, and mayonnaise which has emulsifiers and mayonnaise without emulsifiers and the sauces. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Lokesh, I am from grade 9 a. Today I am going to explain about genes. Genes is a basic unit of hereditary passed from, passed from parent to child. 
ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ जीन्स ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ जीन्स टू एन ऑर्गेम्स ऑफ स्प्रिंग ऑफ इनहेरेंस ऑफ इनोटिक ट्राइट्स फ्रॉम वन जनरेशन टू द अदर जनरेशन इज कॉल्ड जेनोटाइप द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ द जीन्स इज टू ट्रांसपोर्ट द पेंट्स कैस्टिस्टिक टू द छेल इट डिटरमाइंस द हेयर एंड कलर ऑफ द जनरल हेड कलर ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल द रिप्लीकेशन ऑफ जीन्स इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द सेल डिविजन they contain the uh, metabolism rate and the body structure of the uh, individual thank you yes, transportation is one of the most essential things we need in today's life but did you know that we actually get scammed when we go to the petrol pumps to fill our vehicles a very good morning my name is pooja i am bhavika and i am hasna and welcome to scam 2024 let us suppose you go to the petrol pump and ask for 5 liters of fuel but you'll only end up getting 3 or 4 liters of it and at the end of the day you might not even realize that you got scammed but today through our model the fluid flow meter you will get to know the accurate rate of the fuel which flows into your car and also the density of it let us demonstrate that how this happens uh in our project this is the lcd module in this module you can see with what rate the fuel is flowing into your car tank as well as uh, the amount of fuel that is being flowing into your tank um, you can also know the amount of petrol which is already present in your car tank as well as what is being flown into the tank now so uh, i'll pour uh, i'll pour a little bit of fluid to demonstrate how it exactly works as you can see when i pour water there is a change in the reading in the lcd module you can see with what speed the liquid is flowing into your car tank as well as how much liquid is flowing so now the reading is 0.22 liters which means uh, 220 ml of water this shows the exact amount of water that has been flowing it does not give the estimated amount uh, as now will explain how it exactly works and how it can be installed in our vehicles So in the machines there is a uh, chips installed in it and it is and it is con uh, controlled by a controller wh uh, which shows uh, false readings for suppose we uh, ask for 10 liters and they only give us 8 li uh, 8 liters and we believe it because they that's what they show this can be prevented by using uh, f uh, the um, by using our project which can be installed beside the speedometer and also can be accessed with the bluetooth module which can be shown in the phone the project uh, works by arduino flow sensor and the screen the information by the flow sensor is sent to the arduino which uh, converts it into numeric value with the help of its code and then sends it to uh, the lcd screen so that it can be easily accessible by us uh, usually this is what we see in our uh, vehicles but uh, th uh, this is more uh, recommended because it shows the exact number of value thank you very much Good morning everyone my name is Arjun i am from grade 9 and today i have participated in the saifari and i am doing the iot based smart plant monitoring system so in the era of it and iot automation and real time monitoring has become essential for sustainable and efficient plant growth so the smart plant monitoring system aims to revolutionize the plant management by leveraging advanced technologies such as network sensors and cloud computing This smart plant monitoring system aims real-time monitoring and remote monitoring. So it has features like humidity sensor, temperature sensor, and moisture sensor. So it shows you the humidity, temperature, and moisture on the mobile, and it also shows you the temperature, humidity, and moisture on the screen here. And if and it has a rain alarm system and a light system. So if it gets dark, the light automatically lights up. if it gets dark and it has a rain alarm system so if it rains the alarm will ring and it has a main advantage of remote monitoring so farmer can monitor it remotely which helps him to uh, make decisions according to it according to the humidity temperature or the moisture thank you A robot that speaks when you come in front of it isn't that interesting. Good morning, sir. I Shreyas, along with my companion Akshit, are going to showcase our project. The robot body is fully made up of cardboard. 
The circuit consists of ordinary board, ultrasonic sensor, voice playback module, breadboard and connected with jumper wires. The ultra, uh, uh, ordinary board acts as a brain of the robot. Ultrasonic sensor detects an object when it comes in front of it. Voice playback module plays pre-recorded message when it comes when it is instructed by your ordinary board. Breadboard and jumper wires are connected with this all components. Now, Shreyas is going to say how this project works. Here is how it works. When the ultrasonic sensor detects an object in front of it, it sends signals to the ordinary unit board, which then triggers the voice playback module to play the pre-recorded message. For example, As you heard, when I put my hand in front of it, it plays a pre-recorded message. This technology has various applications, such as a tool for visually impaired, a smart home device, and a toy for children. In conclusion, we can say that this project showcases the integration between microcontrollers, voice technology and sensors. I hope you found this demonstration informative and interesting. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Nikhil, a student of grade 9 and today I am going to explain about the topic stem cells in healthcare. So basically, there are two types of stem cells, embryonic and adult stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are found in early developing em embryos like a blastolized. So, and in adult stem cells, they are, limited, they are limited in the human body and they can only be turned into red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. So how do scientists use embryonic stem cells in the laboratory? First, scientists act extract embryonic stem cells from the early developing embryos then they grow them in the laboratory next next they specialize them into whatever kind of cells they want and they put them into the patient's body adult stem cells are not that much of a use because because they are not that versatile versatile and they cannot be turned into all cell types like the embryonic stem cells there are some drawbacks of stem cells that first they ha have the killing of embryos they have the killing of embryos next they have uh, if they have genetic misprogramming they, in the stem cells they have bad genes they can produce virus in the in the patient's body in the patient's body stem cells have two major properties one they can make more types of stem cells two they can tur be turned into other types of stem cells stem cells have a revolutionary future ahead since they cannot since they can be used in various fields of the medical industry thank you uh, this is maya and this is vaishnavi so our project is about ECG, which is also known as an electrocardiogram. It helps us to measure the activity of the heart. It also controls, it also records the electrical signals and controls the heart's rhythm by displaying it on a graph of waves and complexes. This visual representation helps the doctors to identify irregularities such as cardiac errors, etc. It is portable, easy to use, and painless to patients. It, it has also become a standard tool in clinics, hospitals, etc. In fact, an ECG test is often the first step taken in diagnosing a heart attack. An ECG helps in diagnosis of heart conditions, monitoring heart health, and stress testing. It is a vital tool in cardiology as it helps us to understand the heart's function of a person by showing it in a graph form. So coming to our project, it shows the graph form. So coming to our project, it shows the graph of the heart. In it shows the difference when you are holding it and when you are not holding it. When you are holding the wires, it comes with it comes in a graph form. And when you are not holding it, it comes with a straight line. Thank you. Uh, good morning everyone, my name is Lalit and I am of 10, grade 10A. Today my project is about drones. Drones are the futuristic flyers that have innovated the way we work, live and interact with the environment. Particularly in a drone, there are five components. The power source which is the battery, the frame of the drone, the propell uh, propellers, the motors and the flight controller which is also known as the brain of the drone. Usually uh, when we see a drone, we find it in the field of videography or photography 
but as you can see here see here there are many applications of the of the drone such as in logistics for example shipping and delivery in geographical mapping and in uh, agriculture in agriculture to uh, pinpoint the cropping pattern and the irrigation uh, there are many advantages to using a drone for example a drone can, uh, can uh, run on autopilot or without a pilot on board this allows the drone to enter dangerous fields where a human cannot enter or uh, cannot survive a drone can also perform various tasks without any, without the need of a pilot or in other words it can remain auto autonomous if programmed properly thank you i am rohita and i am grace and today we both will be talking about the detoxification of a liver the human body is exposed to thousands of toxins every single day which need to be transposed neutralized and eliminated Detoxification or detox or shot is a physiological or medical removal of toxic substance from the living organism which is mainly done by the liver. The liver and kidney are both naturally capable of detox as they are intercellular proteins such as CYP enzymes. Detoxification by the liver cannot be excreted without undergoing the metabolic transformation so that the substance can become water soluble. Toxic substances include both endogenous and exogenous substances. Every drug, chemical and pesticide can be broken down into metabolized via via detoxification pathways called phase 1 and phase 2. We also have multiple types of detoxification. First of all, we have alcohol detoxification, which is precipitous withdrawal from long-term alcohol addiction without any medical management can cause severe health issues, which can also be fatal. and there is drug detoxification drug detoxification may depend on the location of the treatment but some detoxification centers avoid uh, symptoms from physical withdrawal from alcohol and other drugs and we have alternative medicine certain approaches in alternative medicine claim to remove toxins from the body through herbal electrical and electromagnetic treatments lastly we have the six daily steps for liver cleansing to help our toxic liver to get back to its healthy state first there is hydrate and relax drink water to get hydrated intermediate fasting and eat liver friendly foods then we have cleanse daily with herbs reduce toxins and eliminate them and lastly exercising by sweating them all out thank you for listening to our project and have a great day good morning everyone my name my name is ishikshiti vaishna from grade 9 today i'm going to present about nucleus nucleus is basically a cell organelle it's the place where dna is formed processed copied and replicated in your body it is all it has it it's covered with nuclear envelope which has nuclear pores on it from which cytoplasm cytoplasm is the liquid present inside the cell it is go, uh, gone into the nucleus and and that process is called as protein synthesis it also has nucleolus which produces ribosomes these are the ribosomes present on the cell on the nucleus it is also called as the ribosomal factory because it produces ribosomes ribosomes are play, plays a very significant role in protein synthesis and the and it also produces dna the uh, dna is actually made in the chromatin material the, the thread like structures inside the nucleoplasm nucleoplasm is the fluid present inside the nucleus is called as a uh, nucleoplasm which has chromatin material on top of it which actually has dna inside nucleus plays a, plays a very significant role in the formation of a zygote that's it. thank you good morning i'm shloka of 9b and today i'll be talking about cancer so cancer is nothing but the cell growth and development of the cell which is uncontrollable and the cancer is rapid cell growth and it results in the formation of tumors as well so in the cancer what happens is every cell has a life span but these cancerous cells they don't have a life span and they keep on building up in the body and they use up all the nutrients and oxygen and they also form tumors and they impair the immune system it's mainly caused due to smoking alcohol consumption and 
for nutrition, physical inactivity and obesity. But as of now, the most common factor is age. 88% of the cancer cases are diagnosed in people aged 60 and above. So the main treatments include chemotherapy, radiation therapy, immunotherapy, stem cell transplant and targeted therapies. And due to advanced technology, the fight in cancer, we can beat cancer. Thank you. A very good morning. Myself, Srijini from 9A and today I'm going to represent my project, Renal Disease. Renal Disease is nothing but in a condition where the kidney stops working and cannot remove the extra waste and water from our blood. So this is a part where the infected, it can develop in the both of the kidneys and the symptoms for the renal disease are itchiness, vomiting, urinating too much or little and shortness in breath and etc. So the kidney stone, here is a kidney stone and how kidney stones are formed. When urine becomes too concentrated, the uric acid and another calcium dissolve in the urine and crystallize in the form of stone. This can affect the people the age of 20 to 60. And precautions to be taken, drink plenty of water, aim for in a healthy weight, eat fruits and vegetables and avoid the food with high content of salt. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I am Nikhilesh and his Shravan. Today we are going to present you the model of ocean acidification. Nowadays we see lots of industrial revolutions and human activities that affect our ocean very hardly. So see the color. How it's affected? We dump all the we dump all the waste in the atmosphere. It releases lots of carbon dioxide. So that carbon dioxide goes and reacts with this oceanic water, and it creates carbonic acid. So it is polluted like this, and in future it will be like this if we don't take proper care. So basically, nowadays, uh, like. Uh, vehicle industry is growing up so the carbon dioxide is uh, like uh, releasing so uh, rapidly so this ocean is absorbing the carbon dioxide and becoming acidic so that like ph value is decreasing so if we didn't take any action it will uh, affect the marine life and the marine life will destroy so the current ph rate is 8.1 and uh, in future it will it can decrease to 1 or 2 and uh, that's it. So defects of this is the shell, the shell animals. The shells of the shell animals are created with carbonic carbonate and when this carbonic acid comes and reacts with this carbonate it creates two bicarbonate which is very harmful for shell animals and in, and in turn we consume that shell animals so that we get affected. Stay blue and go. Good morning everyone. I am Hana from grade 8 and this is my project of generation of electricity by burning waste materials. So as you know there is a lot of waste being produced nowadays and to reduce the waste produced we can use this method. So this candle is going to resemble the burning of the waste here. So when I bring the candle near the solar panel, you can see the electricity is being generated and it is creating light. So this, so this method is very useful nowadays as it is used to reduce waste and generate electricity. Thank you. Good morning, I am Roshni from grade 8B. This is my project about antibird system. Animal attacks in farmer's land is common due to the unavailability of any detection system. This can lead to huge wastage of crop produced by the farmer. So we can use this to reduce the wastage. This comes to visual deterrent and auditory deterrent. It consists of a motor which is connected by a fan and a string which is hanged by a ball. When we on this, it strikes the object and creates sound which annoys the birds and keeps them away from the farm. Uh, this this is how it works. There is a background research that ultrasonic devices are static sounds emitting bird deterrents to keep them away from the farms. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Srindi. And I Gayatri. 
are excited to talk about India's, India's Chandrayaan 3 mission. This mission was launched by ISRO of uh, Indian, Indian Space Research Organization on 14 July 2023. This mission mainly focuses on the presence of water and atmo other atmospheric gases on the moon. This is not just a mission to the moon, it's a mission for the future exploration also. It highlights the importance, uh, it highlights the importance of perseverance, innovation and international collaboration of our understanding of space. Now I hand over to Gayatri for further exploration. Starting with the components I used to make this model. This is buzzer, 3 in 7 segment display, draw slider 12 inch, rack, uh, 30 rpm gear motor, switch, 1k resistor, uh, 9 volt battery and battery snap. First we have to con uh, connect the battery snap to the 9 volt battery so that uh, number 9 is displayed on the screen. Now uh, if we press the switch, uh, the countdown starts backwards and a sound will be coming uh, because of the buzzer. When it ends uh, to zero, the lo rocket launches. This mission mainly comprises of a lander named Vikram and the rover named Pragna. This mission made all Indians proud. We hope that we gave an exciting explanation of our project. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Jashwita from Grade 7B. Today my project name is Acid Rainfall, the process of an hydrogen, iron, less pH which can have harmful effects on plants and animals. The definition of an acid rainfall that pH of an less that natural rainwater which, which can have above 5.6 due to the development. The effects of an acid rainfall damages trees and other plants, can destroy other ponds and the water is killing the fishes and acute lives. The buildings and houses are collapsing including mountains and statues and it's going to work like because of the pollution we are getting the acid rainfall and it is harming our environment thank you good morning everyone i am sari of grade 9 Today, let's dive into the fascinating world of cell communication and nerve cells. Cells are the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Cells use special signals to communicate to each other. There are two types of signaling, chemical signaling and mechanical signaling. Chemical signaling is a process where a signal is a protein or other molecule, whereas mechanical signaling, the signal is triggered by a physical or a mechanical force. There are four types of chemical signaling. Paracrine signaling, endocrine signaling, autocrine signaling, and direct signaling. And there are three stages in cell communication like reception, signal transduction, and response. Reception the signal detects a signaling molecule from outside of the cell. Signal transduction it is the signaling molecule that activates enzymes that call it intracellular changes. Third is response. The cell's behavior changes according to the response of the signal. Like, if the signal says divide, the cell division starts. Moving on to nerve cells. There are -type, three main types of nerves. Nerve cells are also known as neurons. Neurons are made up of bundles of axons. The three main types of neurons are motor neuron, sensory neuron and relay neuron. Motor neuron. Motor neuron is responsible for all the voluntary movements in your body, like moving your leg or arm. Sensory neurons receive stimuli from the sensory organs and send signals to central nervous system about the changes in the environment. Whereas, relay neuron connects motor neuron to sensory neuron and allows them to communicate. It is present in your brain and spinal cord. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Today we are going to show about pH test. This is uh, this is Vikram Yashwant. I read, read, okay, read. I'm Banutis. This is Vikram, and here is Yashwant. Today we are going to show about pH test. In pH test, we use it so now we can find out if there is more hydronium or hydroxide in a solution. In another, in other words, it's uh, saying that if there's as if the solution is acidic or basic. 
more many people think uh, cool drinks are good for us but no it's uh, very bad for us since the ph value is uh, and nearly one which is same to us as as some acid so it's not good for us and uh, many toothpaste is the soaps and other things are also in bad quality so we can't use them and many many times uh, they use uh, cheap things so they can ma- manufacture more so it's not good for us thank you motor is on imagine i am driving and uh, whenever i will sleep the buzzer will start and the motor will automatically turn off like this the motor automatically turns so it is indication for that in when we are sleeping the yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. yes ma'am thank you ma'am how it is uh, like in some things like working yes, yes. uh actually there's a sensor which emits a light and that light en- enters our eye whenever you close your eyes the this muscle will reflect back that light and uh, the it will uh, come again to the sensor and uh, as it comes to the sensor it gives signal to the adrenal you know and uh, it happens how many take how many time it is taking the process for the in case uh, first 4 uh, seconds after 3 to 4 seconds the buzzer will start yeah. and after uh, like after 1 second the motor will turn off okay. very nice thank you ma'am uh, good morning everyone my name is shardul i made this project so imagine you are driving and you fall asleep you get lethargic so to avoid that uh, means you may be taken on the verge of death so to avoid that i made this project whenever uh, like this profound glasses will detect your eyes movement and the adrenal uh, and will send signals to the adrenal adrenal will start an alarm and if you don't wake up with that alarm the motor will automatically turn off so i will show you now so now imagine i am the driver i am uh, driving a car the motor is on now and whenever i will sleep the buzzer will start like that and the motor will automatically turn off so this project can save a lot of lives uh, thank you everyone good morning everyone i am suhana of grade 10 myself pooja and we are doing blood grouping so basically blood grouping is classified into four groups uh, group a group b group o, ab and group o blood has antibodies and antigens antigens are the foreign material like bacteria viruses etc which enter our body and antibodies are the protective protein which protects us from antigens so um, we should know our blood group blood uh, knowing our blood group is very vital because uh, if we don't know our blood group in emergency cases we might take uh, we might intake another blood group which will cause uh, blood clotting and which will lead to death so we should uh, knowing our blood group is very vital and presence and absence of antibodies uh, classifies which blood group you belong to so we have liquids over here which is known as anti sera you want exp- so this is anti a which tells the group a and this is anti b which tells group b and this is anti o which tells o and also positive and negative so we'll keep a three drops of blood and add the liquids on one we have to see that the clumping of the blood we have to observe everything in this we have to mix till three then we have to the breakdown of the blood is known as clumping so when the blood breaks down it is known as clumping when we mix this uh, liquids in this uh, we can see clumping of blood if you are a positive there will be clumping in a and also in d so that's how we test blood groups thank you good morning everyone i am arjit from grade 9a this is rohan and this is hindav of grade 9b today we are going to talk about automatic toll gate oh, system so this is an car and this is an ultrasonic sensor if the ultrasonic sensor detects any object in the way it sends signal to arduino on a board through jumper wires as you can see over here and then eventually the arduino on a board will send signals to the servo motor and it will command the servo motor to open the gate so it will open the gate and the car will go through that thing example is uh, in india we use fast tag system where th- there's a camera and there's a qr code on the car's uh, dashboard when the qr code is scanned by the c- camera the money gets sent to the uh, fast tag system and the car moves 
you can also improve this by adding more components and codes such that it only allows specific vehicles in or only opens the toll gate when money is paid. Thank you. Okay. What are your views on today's Saifari event? It's, it's really nice. I am seeing some budding scientists here actually. Uh, really like the model on uh, the robo out there. The vacuum cleaner. It is basically a technology which we are paying a lot of money. And the way they have done it is like super good. Plus uh, the forensic one which I saw upstairs. Yeah, that was like really nice. Really nice. <laughs> Very nicely what about done. your daughter's work? She has done a fabulous job on Tyler and all. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank Thanks you. for being a part. God bless you. To you? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Uh, being a doctor, how did you find uh, all our scientific exhibits? They are very good. They are very good. The students are uh, very confident in expressing their, I mean, the projects. Okay. Uh, I, as far as I remember, this forensic thing is very good. Okay. And these uh, couple of uh, students, they have explained about microbes and bioterrorism. Okay. All these things. They are very nice. They are very confident. Uh, actually, they exceeded my ex expectation. <laughs> Even my son is there. He also okay. did a good job. You can just list your son's name. Uh, he is Ishan Shubankar. He is in fifth grade. A, 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 I mean A section. 5A. Okay. Yeah, 5A. Okay, so how did you find his work? It is good. <laughs> he is good. He is okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is uh, inculcating uh, teamwork also. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that's a great thing. Uh, I expect more and more of these sessions. 100% I think we are looking towards it. Yes. You should, uh, I mean, the school should uh, teach them, encourage them communications and soft skills, which is uh, the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your view. God bless you. Okay, please. We'll take We'll take the video. Okay. Um, hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. You can look here. Okay. Ma'am, how was today's event? Excellent, no? Yeah. Any word? Your child, which class is your child in? Child, uh, Riddhika. Fifth class. Okay. Fifth grade, Riddhika. Okay. Excellent. Chala baondi. Okay. Science fair. Under pillar, manchi parties spent today, sir. Enta baondi, I nante chotan ki pillar under kashta patar gada. Main wala ka health guru nchi baag dail sindi. Health conscious. Pollution anti. Yalla onda ni weather anti. Ani thi wala ka matra science fair lo matta madhe jeppar gada wala. Health guru nchi jeppar. Marm yalla onda ni yalla narch ko ali yem thi naali ani thi matham jeppar pillar science fair lo. Chala excellent ka ondi. Chala bondi. Inki ilant bi mundu mundi inki ekko betta lani. Chala ashis thuna. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. Ma'am, Mika, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Uh, what's your thought on today's uh, safari? Yeah, it's awesome. So actually, uh, actually, I got a personal feeling of uh, enthrallment. Actually, people have put lot of efforts, and it's really very nice to observe such an event. It's too good. So my one word feeling is a feel of serendipity by seeing this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are well. Thank you. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks, madam. How are you? I'm well, sir. Thank you. So, what's your thought on today's safari? Yeah, it's very excellent beyond description. So, it, I cannot yes. describe. Like, there are no words to describe this. I think, like, you need to organize this kind of uh, science fairs frequently. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. God bless you. You want to I, I take a video uh, feedback from you? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm uh, very happy. Yeah, we'll start the video. The whole okay. team are doing very hard work, very good management, contacted man. That's really nice. Hi, there are bachi, bohot acha bol rahe hain. Itne itne bachi, itna confidence, very nice, good job. <laughs> Thank you so much. So much for the wonderful team, ma'am. Thank you. I'm very happy and very satisfied. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hello, sir. I have. You can speak in your own language, sir. Hey. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, it's a pleasure to have you today. Okay, how do you find uh, Saifari of all the students? Yeah, it's very nice, and everyone prepared very well, and they are explaining properly. And uh, uh, the best part is that everyone prepared very well. Like, yeah. and what the the context and what is the conclusion? Everything they are explaining in a proper way. Okay. So, yeah. which class is your child in? So, my child is studying eighth class. Okay. So, your child is also a part of it? Yeah, it is here only. Okay. So, how did you find seeing your child there? 
Yeah, it's nice and uh, uh, when uh, we are preparing uh, these uh, uh, last one month back, you told that we have a science fair in our school and uh, and uh, this is the first time he was participating. Oh, okay. After his uh, eight, eight years of his educational journey, okay. he never participated. Every time he was going and seeing only. And this time he said that I will participate and uh, I want to do something. And I suggested what do you want. And he suggested, uh, he, he, he came with idea that I want to do something and uh, Ha. So, earthquake. 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 Okay. okay. So I I given support. What you want? I will uh, just buy and I will give an end up. And we three together. I have only one son. We three okay. together. We prepared that till one o'clock of <laughs> night. <laughs> so you put in a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that will give you confidence for him also. Absolutely. So and he is doing first time. And uh, we just want to see. We will what we can do the best. So uh, we given support and we'll see what will happen. Thank you so much, sir, for your feedback. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You can speak normally, sir, in your own respective language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, is the my name is Tirumala. Uh, actually, it is chala bondi science fair. Uh, chala custom body pillar underu chala workout che siru. It's a nice. Uh, is the very knowledgeable and uh, interesting. It's a uh, nice. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. So, how was today's event? Good morning, madam. Good morning, madam. Okay. How was today's event, sir? The event was very good. One more good and best event conducted by W Delhi World Public School. Thank you. Ma'am, you are here. <laughs> the real efforts what uh, students has put that was really good and one more thing is that all the each and every science whatever they conducted events no, that was very good by the daily world public school but this event was more informative and especially the support from the teachers and the management was good for the growth and development skills of the students so how did you find david denzil he was always wonderful and that <laughs> that his skills are only bringing out by the staff of your management and the teachers the support of your teachers he is really make, making wonders these days I, I think it's also his upbringing sir I, okay i think that's really but uh, one thing i can tell that that what uh, the teachers are giving the guidance for the students not only as a studies but uh, these skills are really help out there in the future in their career development that was really what i we are like in this school. Oh, we are so blessed, sir. Thank you so much for being a part. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Shlok's father? Yes, it's Shlok's father. I remember. Sir, would you like to give a feedback? No. No. A video? You'll write. Okay. Good morning, sir and ma'am. I hope you're doing well. Yes, ma'am. What is your uh, thought about today's event? Uh, yeah, it was really excellent, ma'am. I felt like uh, it should be like uh, shared with among all the students, so that that what particular project mean like uh, only that group knows what exactly the project related data. So I want every child to know uh, what uh, exactly all projects are uh, the, uh, per, per, per exhibited here. Yes. And uh, uh, because instead of parents, ch every child should know the. Uh, uh, what projects are gone here and they get some knowledge with every project here. Yes. 
It was very excellent. Uh, it was really amazing uh, and rocking this time. I think it is first time performing this. Uh, yes, it, it is the first time, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. It was really helpful uh, to the children to come with their uh, uh, self knowledge. And every student here is a scientist. I felt. Thank you. Seeing, Thank you so much, ma'am. Seeing this, ma'am. Yes, it was so, awesome. And you are even saying any feed, uh, the feedback form. Yes, ma'am. We will feel. No, so you said about the feedback form. And yes, feedback form. I felt like uh, they should be like uh, when we are exiting the room, there should be one feedback form uh, sheet or uh, book to note down sure. for every project. Okay, thank you so much. It was nice. So, anything else that you would like to add? Yes, ma'am. It's really wonderful. I can see the effort the students put, the faculty, and it was fabulous. Uh, unless uh, when I when I was coming, I thought it's a normal one, but after coming here, it's fabulous, ma'am. And this should be a exhibited to others not only the school students it has to be arranged to, to the media as well so that it would be recognized everywhere sure. this is wonderful event and it's been uh, eight years the first time but it, it has to be exhibited outside as well showcasing our talent sure it's 100 percent i think it decorated very well a lot of efforts being put in by the teachers management and also excellent with the each and every student ma'am very happy I seeing this trip. all the uh, the faculty and the staff and the management for their effort, ma'am. Thank you so much for thank your kind you, words. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, ma thank you. Thank you so much.